in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I think a lot and one of the things that I think about is the level of transformation and impact that God has granted unto us as individuals and as a ministry to be able to communicate a dimension of spiritual reality to help build and strengthen the body of Christ and I think it's a great privilege you see the more you know God the more you see how easy it is for him to do without you. Are we together? The more you know God, the more you have an encounter with his might. The more you see how small and inconsequential you are in the overall equation of his will. And then you see how much is a privilege for him sometimes to have to wait on you and wait on your will to cooperate with him before he moves. Are we together and our lives um, are a reflection of such a testimony that it looks as though it is difficult for God to do without us although he has all the power and he seems to always patiently carry us along his program and it's a privilege for us to represent his purposes not only in this city but in many regards around different areas of this nation and around the world it's a pleasure and it's a privilege and we thank you let us never forget these things there's so many people thousands of people following us right now from different parts of the world we are here different people coming from different places um, you know sometimes we get so used to how easy the anointing of the spirit can make things become that we think it is so for everyone and sometimes we get so familiar with the dealings the operation of God's anointing that when we take our time to lavishly give him thanks like this it looks like a waste of time but then the success and everything that you see in our lives and as a ministry is built on laws and one of it is a heart that is passionately committed to saying thank you are we together if if this is all we do today as boring as it may seem as unspiritual as it may seem and as spiritually basic as it may seem for many this is the key that has kept god in touch with many mighty people they know how to go back and say lord thank you your grace your grace I'm nothing without you It's your grace Your grace Shines on me Sing it from your heart Your grace Your grace I'm nothing without you your grace, your grace shines on me. Shines on me, shines on me. But I'm everything with you. Shines on me. Shines on me, it's your grace. Hallelujah. Lord, we sincerely thank you. We sincerely thank you 
for the privilege of being the ones to partner with you in birthing such magnificent testimonies in the lives and the destinies of people. It is not within the power of any man to change any life. But with God, all things are possible. And Lord, we thank you for being the secret, the mystery, the law, and the reason behind our success and the lifting. Why should I keep what people say? They don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. Truly, they don't know what you mean to me. They don't know. But I'm glad I know what you mean to me. I'm glad I know what you mean to me. You are the air I breathe. You are the air. Your very presence that is living in me. Just let me pour out my heart for a few moments before His presence. You are my daily bread. You are my daily bread. You are my Your very word that is spoken to me, oh, oh, and now I'm asking for you. Not a song, it's the truth. And I'm desperate for you. I'm lost without you. Shabakata la barato sutu. This is part of the meeting. It's an atmosphere for you. Every 
Lord, we pour our hearts and our love on you. How can we be tired of saying thank you to the one who has made us all that we are? We sincerely acknowledge you. You are faithful. Above and beyond our limitations and weaknesses, you are faithful. You have chosen us and you have put your name upon our lives and destinies. You see the wonder, the wonder you have made out of our lives. We are deeply grateful. We are deeply grateful. We are deeply grateful. Just hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Just hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Just make contact. Just 
Oh, like a bride waiting for her groom. Even so, come. Even so, come. Even so, come. Kapara kota shabrandi geratu sata. Seka tebra seka tebra seka tebra skata bara da bara da bara. Bena na ma na ma sota na 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 ma ir na 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 ma. Bena ma na ma sota na 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 ma ir na 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 ma. Bena ma sota na 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 ma ir na 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 ma. Bena na 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 ma sota na 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 ma. Bena na na ma sota na na ma kari na 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 ma. Shaka para da 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 para Shenanana <laughs> Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. There is something that will lead heaven to this place. Keep praying. Shabara katun so brandi gera poshi brandi. Keep praying. Keep praying. Rakata para to supra de 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 Shaka pa ta ta pras ta ta pa ra da ba na da ba na da 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 da. Keep praying. Don't be tired. Nana mana nana nana masa prata tapa rada bala taka tapa taka te reka taka tapa rada bos. Shapa kata para kato sopra teka te bari teka te. Shaba nana mana nana mosu ni ada ni. Hey, na 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 na, Maria, na 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 na, Oso na na Maria, na na, She na 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 ma, She na 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 ma, She na 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 ma. Hallelujah. We are going to pray one more time. If you are sick in your body, just lay your hands there. There is a strong healing anointing in this place right now. You are sick anywhere in your body. Lay your hands. Lay your hands. I see the power of God 
about to touch people in a few minutes. Miracles of healing. The Lord is healing migraine headache right now. There are people suffering from intense migraine headache. The power of God is touching you right now. Right now right now right now i'm seeing um i'm seeing a lady having severe like like menstrual cramps severe menstrual cramps right now as i speak the power of god is touching 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 that pain leaves right now that pain leaves right now there is a spirit that has been walking with a lady you literally feel as if there is a man walking by your side that spirit is leaving you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost that spirit is leaving you right now this is Zion the city of the Lord there's someone your voice for a while your voice has been unable to be clear it's like there's something hooking you you're going to feel like fire on your throat right now right now and your voice will come back to normal right now right now hotness of the body that's what the lord is telling me father we give you all the glory hotness of the body hotness of the body is living right now there is someone you brought your mother your mother is in this place she's been unable to sleep for a long time she can't even sleep but right now the power of god is coming upon her and that devil is giving way right now that devil is giving way right now that devil is giving way right now. That devil is giving way right now. There's someone you have a boil, like a boil in your nose, right inside your nose. The power of God is touching it. Not only will it be healed, it will disappear right away. You will touch it and you will not feel anything. Right now, the Lord is touching. The Lord is touching. The Lord is touching. I'm seeing a river in the realm of the spirit. That's what I'm seeing flowing into this place. A river. It's a river of miracles. Many will be swept by that river. It's a river that flows from the love and the throne of God. It's a river bringing healing. Bringing healing. Bringing healing. There are, there are miracles going on. Healing miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a spectacular miracle that the Lord wants to do for many people. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a group of people in the realm of the spirit. You used to hear God in profound dimensions. But from the beginning of this year, something happened to your hearing and it's an attack from the gate of hell now please pay attention i'm speaking by the spirit it's an attack from darkness upon your hearing and it's like something has closed you some of you don't even know you are part of it i'm about to pray for you because that that prophetic dimension you need it to hear what i want to teach you tonight you need it there are some dimensions of spiritual communication that you cannot understand it scientifically and the lord is asking me to pray Therefore, Father, I stretch my hands on your people. Every gate of the prophetic that has been closed, 
every gate, every gate, the hearing ear, let that grace be released right now. The hearing ear, the hearing ear, Sata Kaparata. Many of you will hear the sound of angels instantly, instantly, inside, outside, those following on our social media platform. The Lord is opening, the Lord is opening prophetic dimensions, the sharing of the spirit, authentic sharing, not nonsense, an authentic sharing. Shakataba, Sheketekata, Rakatapakotosia. For some of you, it is restoration, restoration, restoration. What happened to your hearing that you no longer hear the sounds of the spirit? Like fire is coming on the ears of people. Fire, fire, fire. fire coming on people. Fire, a restoration of hearing, a restoration of hearing, a restoration of hearing. Lift your hands. There are people here, your dreams used to be prophetic, but it was hatched. And my God, it's a something is happening to your spirit man. The hand of God is coming upon your spirit man. The hand of God coming upon your spirit man. Right now. Dreams. 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 Shaka patata. Strength. Where you will understand the counsel of God in the visions of the night. The counsel of God in the visions of the night. The counsel of God in the visions of the night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last thing I'll pray for before we sit down is sensitivity listen let me tell you if you lack sensitivity in this season and in this time you will never be able to be in sync with what god is saying sensitivity is like breathing in the realm of the spirit to be able to understand the impulses of the spirit and align yourself with what the spirit is doing and saying he said the sons of issachar they had an understanding of the time and they knew what Israel ought to do. I want to pray for you. There is a grace that makes men sensitive. Many of us used to be sensitive, especially our sisters. Something has happened to your sensitivity. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. This is a mountain of the Lord's house where grace is sufficient. Grace is sufficient. Right now, I stretch my hands. May that grace begin to fall on men and women. Let it fall, let it fall. Sensitivity, discernment, sensitivity, discernment, kapakata la pokosopa. Sensitivity, discernment to the speakings of the spirit. Sensitivity, discernment to the speakings of the spirit. Mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, you were mighty on your throne, hey, mighty on your throne, you were mighty in this place, mighty on your throne, you were mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne. you were mighty on your Mighty on your throne, you are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne, mighty in my life. Mighty in my life, mighty in my life. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Mighty in my life. Father, we pray that you go ahead and do everything you intend for us to experience tonight. Right beyond our dimensions, right beyond our perceptions, 
right beyond our yieldedness. I know God, I pray that you activate strange things in the lives of people. Strange things in the lives of people. Please sit down carefully if you can. Tonight will be a night of strange impartations. If you can, just sit down and let your heart be open. Let your spirit be sensitive. No carelessness, no distraction. Please. Koinonia is a place of impartation. You need impartation to rise and step into your prophetic destiny. There are times that certain things need to be activated. Nothing can cover for noise and stories. You must come into the reality of certain experiences and impartation is one of the platforms that can bring you into those realities. Once again, I welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. Tonight is a night of strange impartations. And there is a reason why God is doing it. There is a reason why God is bringing us to this dimension of impartations. It's not just for nothing. Listen, in the course of my teaching, I'll be very brief tonight. But in the course of my teachings, there will be different kinds of anointings just coming in. You get this in Koinonia. Koinonia is a place where things are activated. And so when your word comes, it will come upon you. Yours is just to be sensitive. As I teach, there will be dispensing of graces. Dispensing of graces. Be sensitive. Don't just hear what I'm saying. A time will come. Yours will come upon you. So it's going to be a noisy meeting. Don't worry. You will hear what I'm saying. But as I teach, people will receive things. Will receive things. Inside, outside, everywhere. You will receive things. Shabratu sakuratu saprita shidahari. Listen. The church must pay the price for a genuine anointing that will really be able to bring God to the scene. The church must pay the price for a genuine, authentic anointing that will be able to bring true results for people. The only way we can become a revelation of the Christ, I'm telling you this, is to contend for a dimension in the spirit that affords us the privilege of hosting superior dimensions of the presence and the power of God. Talk is cheap. It's easy to make a lot of noise in the body of Christ. It's easy to stand upon many doctrinal and theological dissertations communicating the things that we believe should be but in the final analysis people need to experience the reality of the kingdom and i think this is where a lot of we pastors have not done justice for people a lot of us are speaking prophets a lot of us are mighty pastors and apostles and prophets and bishops we can communicate spiritual reality but the challenge is when it comes to the practical demonstration of the essence of our communication we try to create all kinds of theological excuses so there are so many things we teach that god is there are so many things we teach that god can do there are so many realities we we whet the appetite of god's people by opening them up to the possibilities that can be in the spirit but it is so frustrating when people's appetites are to the apex yet we sustain the power and the life to experientially draw them into those experiences so we teach on healing we teach on different kinds of healing different dimensions of healing and then in the final analysis the sick person still goes back sick the cancer patient still goes back 
with, with their cancers. We are happy about dispensing theologically arranged communications. But the Bible says, listen, the Bible tells us that the gospel, listen, is not just about the excellency of speech. Right? But the demonstration of power to the end that the faith of people will not be founded upon the wisdom of men but upon the power of God. No matter what you say about God, if you cannot bring him to the scene for me to relate with his might, you have wasted my time. I may applaud you for your intelligence and your ability to be flawless in your research. But let me tell you something. In the final analysis, people need to be transformed. Demons are not a theory. They are real. Sicknesses are not a theory. They are real. Oppression is not a theory. It is real. Poverty is not a theory. It is real. Only preaching largely are theories. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hallelujah. The Lord showed me a vision a few days ago. And in that vision, I saw so many people in the church weary and tired. That's what I saw in the vision including pastors i saw people seated and stranded no message because everything to be preached have been preached i saw members frustrated and humiliated and the lord began to reveal to me that it is a strategy please pay attention it's a prophetic teaching tonight it's a strategy by the kingdom of darkness because when you study when you listen to my teaching why revivals fail I shared with you there a strategy with which Satan uses to defeat many believers. Satan will never strike you at your point of strength. He knows that all men are human. Although we are divine, there is a human component to us. So the moment you are doing the work of the kingdom, advancing the purposes of the kingdom, fervent in prayer, strong in the word, the devil will not attack you. He knows that there is one thing that is common to all men. It's called exhaustion. The reality of our humanity. That no matter how powerful you are, no matter how anointed you are, a time must come when the reality of your humanity will meet up with you. It is at that point that men are separated from the boys. It is at that point that only those who sustain a system in the spirit to continue stand i saw that vision i saw faces i recognized and i could not believe that such great men could be weary now you see a man of god can be weary and you will not know because don't mistaking the grace upon a man to dispense truth and his personal growth and progress there are two different things i can be as dry and weary as whatever but when i stand upon this pulpit the anointing that comes with my office will make me act so flawless you will not know that i'm at the verge of giving up are we together most times we mistaking the grace and the unction that accompanies the office of a man to mean that because that grace looks ever fresh ever flowing in power that it necessarily means the person is highly motivated and happy no there are times i've been so tired physically tired going for meetings and i i can sometimes it looks like i can't stand for 15 minutes but the moment i hold that mic i no longer become joshua selman an apostolic anointing comes and i can stand for hours now you may mistake in my strength to mean that i am not weak do you know sometimes when I get back home, even to eat becomes a problem? Are we together? So I saw weariness in that vision. I saw many people gassing out in prayer, literally like a meter, just diminishing. 
I saw people gassing out in their world level. And one of the areas that I saw people crying is the area of not getting results financially and otherwise. It was frustrating people. I saw quarrels between people. Fathers, mothers, different people. I saw pastors fighting themselves. And I was wondering, what is the meaning of all this nonsense? And the Lord told me, this is what the devil wants to bring. He's taking advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping the nations as a tool. And he wants to wreak havoc in the lives of people. Are we together? Part of the advantages of a true apostolic ministry is to have an eye that sees and the ability to perceive the impulses of the spirit part time and communicate to people the realities that are the emphasis of God for that moment. That's why we pray for perception because there are many of us, if your perception were alive, you would have picked the signal. Let me tell you something. It's important to gauge your spiritual growth. Don't let men clap you into spiritual mediocrity. What are you an MOG for when you cannot perceive the impulses of the spirit? What are you a campus fellowship president for? Or a pastor or an apostle? When the things of the spirit happen, discussions are going on in the realm of the spirit and your presence cannot be registered because you have not sustained an ability to rise beyond your flesh and understand the speakings of the spirit. Hallelujah. Ministry is not all about preaching, but the ability to perceive the impulses of people. When God makes you a leader, he commits unto you the destinies of people. It's your responsibility now to be in sync with the spirit. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 says, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower. It says, and I will see what the Lord will say. Not hear what he will say. See, perceive, conceive what he's saying. When I saw this, my heart really broke. Especially when I saw faces I could recognize. I saw that people had gas out. Truly. Mothers who used to have a very strong prayer altar. I saw the thing going down. Usually it starts through carelessness. Here and there. Even if you don't pray one week, it doesn't matter. There's grace for me. I'll come again. And then before you know it, completely void of power. And you know the interesting thing? No matter how bad you are, the devil will never strike you. He's smart. If he strikes you, you will go for a retreat very fast. And you will come back. So he will allow you to keep moving. There is a threshold level. It's like a gauge in the spirit. You keep going down. He will not strike keep going down one day he will aim at you and if not for the mercy of god and the prophetic he will hit you bad blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of the Father? Hallelujah. I will share with you three keys the Lord revealed to me. That if not managed, will strengthen the power of darkness to cause the havoc that it plans to cause. Take note of this month, July. You see, this month, July, there is, there is intense warfare going on in the realm of the spirit. Those who are sensitive, no. Those who are not sensitive, just assume and move carelessly and foolishly until they become victims. This month, mark this month, July, you see, is a month of intense spiritual building. You need to build capacity for the months to come. Victory is assured, but the strength of many will be tested in the months to come. You will see this happen. The strength of men of God, the strength of people their their spiritual capacity will be tested and only those who have built fortification in the spirit the bible says for us to redeem the time take advantage of the time are we together 
So the devil is attacking the prayer lives of people. Dramatically. You see, he's not attacking it by stopping you from praying. I will show you the things. The first thing that the devil is using to sabotage the prophetic advancement of believers and the church, listen, is exhaustion. The reality of the weariness of our bodies. The reality of that weariness. Exhaustion. Psychological exhaustion. Physical exhaustion. Are we together? So when people gas out, they come to a point where it no longer makes sense to wait upon the Lord and trust the Lord. Because many hopes have been disappointed. Many dreams seemingly look like they are shattered. People look at their experience versus their prophecy and it does not match. And so many are fainting including the great ones who should stand to strengthen many people and there's nothing to be embarrassed there that's why god is opening us up to it so that we will rise is god blessing us exhaustion weariness that fatigue that spiritual fatigue where you want to study your bible and you just look at it and it looks like a body you want to open your Bible and study. It looks like a burden. You buy books, but you don't read them. You buy DVDs, but you can't watch them. There seems to be a spirit that takes advantage of our humanity and our weariness. So, you are buying books. You are buying tapes. You are downloading messages. Those around will think you are taking advantage of them. But you know that it's been a long time since you made contact with these resources. Not because you are not of God. It's called weariness, exhaustion. Even the young men shall faint and the youth will utterly fall, he says. That's the first thing that I saw that the devil is taking advantage of to destroy people. Just destroy people. Just destroy people. The second thing that the Lord revealed to me is financial limitation. Write it down. I saw a lot of people whose focus had been distracted and the reason was because there were no resources. I saw churches, groups, people, even people who used to participate actively in the house of God, prayer meetings, prayer groups, the reality of the stress and strain that lack of finances brings. A lot of people started asking themselves questions. Look. We're, we're humans. Let's go and, and, and solve our family needs first. And it's a plot. It's a plot by darkness. Are we together? Where believers go to pray. And they can't pray. Because of financial weariness. And even if they pray. The entire circumference of their prayer. Is lamentation and a plea for open heavens. You may not realize it. But it's a strategy. It's a strategy. Listen, let me tell you something. Satan weighs the governments of nations like a treasure on a balance and manipulates them according to his desire. This thing called mammon is Satan's weapon of mass destruction. Mammon. Mammon. That spirit, the only spirit that Jesus taught that you can worship either him or that spirit he never said satan he said you cannot serve two masters so in any way your servanthood must be registered either to god or to mama hallelujah in that vision i saw people losing jobs companies downsizing people there are not many times you hear me speak prophetically like this but you write it and see i saw it happening to people are we together several people confused even do you know that pastors and churches went down financially because their members didn't have the means you know offerings and tithes and all of that and it was a weariness to people and subtly the teachings about spiritual growth, the teachings about 
empowerment intimacy encounter began to diminish because the pastors were forced to have to continue talking about finances it became as though it was the only key that will have to keep the people coming to the churches are we together when i saw this thing my heart dropped and i said my god what is this you have to do something about this nonsense because the devil wants to take advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping africa and that spirit that is sweeping nigeria that bitterness that offense many people no longer pay attention to god you meet somebody and talk to him about spiritual growth and the person will even tell you to go away why because we have said it unapologetically in this ministry that when your finances is not secured it will affect your spiritual life there's no confusion about it i hope you believe what i'm sharing with you oh please you better do please you better do because it will happen the third thing i saw was it's like flies you know how house flies like a swarm of flies now there are times i've seen these things prophetically and i've shared them here over but i saw a swarm of flies just coming across regions ah, and i looked at it and the lord took my mind back to the plague one of the plague that happened in the days of moses when those the swamp of flies came around and began to consume people and i had in my spirit the ministry of the devourer manifesting as sicknesses manifesting as tragic events and ultimately death i saw this thing rampant manifestation of mysterious sicknesses that cannot be diagnosed in hospitals they will check you with machines and say nothing is, is happening blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed are you for you come in the name of I'm not a prophet of doom but I saw the tears in Nigeria in the month of September it was almost unbearable I'm not just listen to me I've not finished preaching I'm not a prophet of doom but I saw it was bad economically and otherwise it was it was like this country was completely clueless and at a point of a mess i saw people being um what do they call it laid off from work completely laid off husbands wives laid off their services were no longer needed in different sectors including government sectors they downsized people because they needed to accommodate what was happening are we together i saw an increase in crime rate theft stealing including stealing people not just stealing things stealing people why is god revealing this to scare you no god is revealing this to strengthen you he will never bring a prophecy without a strategy just keep following there is always an exemption for the church but the problem most times is we don't pay attention there are people who hear what I'm saying now. I'm, I'm sorry, especially for elderly people. They just shut down and say, all these idiots talking again. And then until it happens, and then we become victims of situations and circumstances. You see, let me tell you something. Prophecy, prophecy in its purest form was designed not just to give people, to make people privy to something that will happen the most important part of prophecy is the strategy for exemption not what will happen the strategy for exemption any true prophet that brings a word from the lord especially if it's a word that is on the negative side if it came from god 
God must be able to speak to his people and say this is a strategy you can choose it especially for certain things that are written judgments you cannot pray them away but there is a system like the flood of Noah there was a system that was built called the ark like the passing of the angel of death upon Egypt the mystery of the blood of the lamb and the Passover right it was the mystery of exemption but you see the church we we have this ugly mentality which came from a misguided understanding of what the New Testament teaches I can relate with God I don't need to hear anybody leave me alone if he's so God will speak to me if God has not spoken to me I will not listen let me tell you something listen I was teaching the school of ministry students our spiritual growth is based on our personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ but the advancement of the kingdom is based on covenants you have to understand this your spiritual growth and my spiritual growth is based on my personal encounter my knowledge of who God is his ways and that's how I grow in the Old Testament it used to be through prophets and mediums but now the Bible tells us that Jesus has come as a mediator. He's opened a new and living way to all of us. We can now access God directly in terms of spiritual growth. But the advancement of God's kingdom is not general. God finds men and enters a covenant with those men to represent his dealings in a particular dimension. And every time God wants to deal with a territory in that dimension, it must come through those channels. They are called spiritual tribes they represent the communication of god's purposes in a dimension so when you talk about faith every time god wants to bring his speakings as regards the word of faith there are spiritual channels he has entered a personal covenant with and align them to be able to communicate his purposes in that respect Bishop Oyedeko, Kenneth Copeland. You can trace that spiritual tribe and they represent his communications in that regard. Are we together? There are other dimensions. When the spirit of revival wants to fall upon the nation, there are people who represent the spiritual tribe that communicates that reality to the world. It's not general. So your tapping into that possibility only becomes on the strength of your alignment with what God is doing. When God wants to come in in the area of finances and prosperity, I know that everyone will be blessed, but there are people who have a personal covenant with God that represent his speakings in that regard. You will never ignore their ministry and hear the current dealings of the spirit as far as that is concerned. So the advancement of the kingdom it's not based on personal relationship it's based on covenant God calls a man called Abraham the first man in the Bible who showed us that men can walk by faith with God are we together he is God's type of faith the only reason why we can tap into the possibilities of God as far as the blessing is concerned is on the strength of the covenant that God entered with one man called Abraham are we together when God wanted to salvage a nation he used one man called Moses entered a personal covenant with Moses that afforded Moses an unusual access to God beyond his personal spiritual growth because Moses himself did not make the cut to the promised land how be it based on that covenant to an extent that although Moses may have failed spiritually in the book of Jude an angel came to carry his body and Satan still wanted the dead body because they represent systems. They are not just human beings. They are systems. Elijah was a man who represented God's system. God's covenant of reformation. God's covenant of, of um, forerunning revivals. He's called Elijah the Tishbite. Are we together? So by the time you allow people to begin to corrupt your mind and say don't make it look like only some people can hear God. No, the idea is not a show of superiority. The idea is an election by grace where men have become like trees. They are like spiritual vines and your connection to them is how you are able to tap into certain possibilities. I've shared it with us here. Abraham 
gave birth to Ishmael with Hagar. Is that true? Hagar was crying. Ishmael was crying. But the Bible says God had the voice of the young lad. Not the voice of Hagar. Why? Because when God looked at Ishmael, he saw Abraham and received and saw the covenant. God, more often times, will say he blessed Solomon for the sake of his father, David. Are we together? When the kingdom was about to be advanced after Christ came, he got 12 men, entered a personal covenant with them. Listen, let me tell you. There is a difference between those apostles and us. We are equal in Christ. But they were men who entered a certain kind of covenant with God. That represented the advancement of God's kingdom. If Satan killed all those 12 apostles. The kingdom could not be advanced. Because it was through them that it would be spread. That's why God protected them. Angels had to come and open prisons to force them to go out. Are we together? One man called John, the beloved, had a personal understanding. It was his personal covenant with God that granted him access to show us the revelation, the apocalypse, the unfolding of prophecy. There are still men like that on the earth. There are not many, but there are. In fact, the system of God's electing these men is always in twelves. There's no time to teach you on that. That God's apostolic governing system is always in twelves. So in, in regions, you will always find this number, twelve. The apostolic spiritual governing council of God. They may not even know themselves. But they represent God's order of activities. Are we together? But you see... When the devil wants to deceive you, he will bring pride and make you look like I can access the throne of God by myself. I, am, I don't need to hear anything. Even when God is giving a word of caution, most times we don't listen and we say, no, 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 no. I'm, nobody should do this and that and that. And then, you know, um, I don't even want to go into that, that teaching because it will take our whole time. As you know, I love the body of Christ. I am the last person who will fight the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ and I love the different dimensions of spiritual operation. But then I am always quick to attack imbalances. Especially when they get to a level where they can corrupt the authenticity of the work of believers. The moment an imbalance gets so bad that it can bring you out of spiritual alignment, it calls for concern. Are we together? And one of it is, of course, as we know, the concept of grace. Are we together now? Now, when you understand the concept of grace and you isolate it with respect to other things that God is doing, it becomes an error. Grace as a doctrine on its own is an error. It only makes sense when you add it together and you piece it together with every other thing God is doing. When you study the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, theologically speaking, contains the highest church truth. Are we together? Where Apostle Paul was teaching the church, he was giving them certain doctrines, the entire scope of a Christian experience. Six chapters, which were a communication of the entire activities of the believer. So it starts, theologically speaking, with what we call sitting, right? You've, heard, you've read that and many of you have heard it in different messages. It was that revelation came by a man called Watchman Nee. Watchman Nee was the, the, the apostle that God used to communicate the realities of redemption in a very balanced and authentic way to the body of Christ. And so that position of sitting, the Bible starts in the book of Ephesians teaching us how, in fact, when it starts in chapter 1, it never talks about us, it talks about Christ. And all that he has done when you start reading chapter 2 it now brings us into the scene right we are now raised up with Christ so the revelation of God's grace is seen in chapter 1 and 2 and it is true that the foundation of a believers life 
is predicated upon the grace of God there are certain things that we can never have ourselves like righteousness it is impossible for anybody to have righteousness by himself the Bible says the best of our righteousness is as filthy rags and do not confuse righteousness and uprightness they are not the same righteousness and uprightness are not the same righteousness is a gift from God uprightness is our response the advantage our our work of faith I'm just giving us are you getting blessed I just want to establish a few things before we continue it's very very important so the Bible starts teaching us on the grace of God and all the possibilities that come with that grace all that Christ had done for us in his death his burial his resurrection and his ascension into heaven in fact it was on the strength of that that Paul began to teach in chapter in verse 17 he said for this cause I have a passion for you understanding this this is the foundation of your victory in Christ and for this cause I Paul bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you right the spirit of revelation you know and understanding that your eyes being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know certain things one is the hope of your calling and then you know the power that raised Christ that was exerted when Christ was raised from the dead you know and, and all of that and Paul begins to speak he knew that the church needs to know that but Paul did not just walk there he didn't stop there he began to talk about what is called theologically our walk of faith right character now you taking advantage of the grace of God I told you there's, there are two dimensions to the grace of God there is a grace of God as unmerited access and there is a grace of God as power to live like Christ they are all called grace don't just confuse them grace does not just mean what God has done and we receive by faith there is a dimension of grace that represents everything Christ has done that we could not do and he gave it to us we receive it by faith but there is a dimension of grace that empowers us to do we will do but it's not by our strength are we together and then he wraps up the book of Ephesians with what is called the the you know uh, standing and then our, our walk and then you know sitting and standing then it talks of spiritual warfare our ability to contend against powers and principalities and listen every doctrine that must build a believer please hear me every doctrine that must build a believer must sustain all these components whenever there is a deviation from this pattern it will lead to error if you try to teach people how to do warfare how to do character and you forget the grace of god you will lead them into error and legalism are we together when you try to bring isolate the doctrine of holiness without giving men the foundation of faith you will lead to self-righteousness which does not hold any weight in the spirit and so it must be in that order the first thing believers must understand about god is not warfare is the grace of god and that's encapsulated in what we call the gospel of salvation a revelation of the substitutionary work of uh, uh, jesus christ which is a reflection of the love of the father so when we see that grace then our walking right now by faith is our own participation that's called the gospel of the kingdom our reward in gratitude and honor for that sacrifice for us and then our standing it says haven't done all to stand stand Now, let me tell you something. The part of this truth you ignore is the part the devil will use to destroy your life. You can't choose sitting as it were. Grace. You can't choose kingdom just like that and isolate it. You can't choose deliverance just like that. There's a series on it and you can get it after the service. It's called the full gospel. Where all these doctrines were examined one by one. There are imperfections, there are imbalances to the end that the bride of Christ will become perfect. He said, come and I will show you the lamb's wife. He said, and he showed me a city equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in height. And part of the possibilities in the kingdom is the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. God stations these men 
so that they can communicate the speakings of the spirit and it is that same order of god's system that was mimicked by the antichrist system when you read the book of revelations from chapter 13 and the rest the bible tells us that satan empowered the beast the beast will now empower the false prophets the same order the same way god empowers his apostles and prophets to communicate certain things satan empowers the beast who empowers the false prophets and then they continue carrying out their agenda so there is a system spiritual growth is not haphazard you don't choose how you want it's not even just how your pastor said so there is an irrefutable pattern that has not changed it did not change just because um god jesus christ came and died for us no it's an eternal pattern it was carved out of who god is not what he's doing are we together there are people who believe in miracles but they do not believe in the prophetic and the apostolic that lapse is satan's authorization in their life there are people who do not believe in the gift of the spirit but they are well-meaning people that lapse is satan's you know advantage in their life there are people for instance who believe in grace but they may not believe in holiness and righteousness and all of that and satan takes advantage of it there are people who believe in deliverance but may not believe in the grace of god and satan takes advantage and they are forever fighting every and anything the key is not exemption the key is balance everybody say balance say it again balance the key is balance because all of these things are components of the same system hallelujah and so i want you to believe the prophetic is real it is still functional it did not die with the new testament the prophetic is real now i know that here and there people may have exaggerated certain dimensions of it but it's not enough reason for us to throw the baby and the bad water lives can be rescued when we understand what god is saying and the bible says he that hears he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches so if he's talking to one person he's talking to the ecclesia the church hallelujah pray in one minute and say lord i hear what you are saying i'm not rebellious i hear what you are saying you are speaking to the church i am part of the church and i hear what you are saying i hear what you are saying i'm not a rebel i hear what you are saying i hear what you are saying go ahead and pray strategies right now that God revealed to me and then we'll take some time and really pray I want us to seriously pray tonight and God will grant us that grace are we together if you fight economic empowerment get set to struggle spiritually promise made a statement when he came to receive the offering and he said having abundance of supplies will increase your prayer life and minimize your prayer points how true you see let me tell you something this system that we live in cosmos is a system that was designed intelligently are we together god made the heavens and the earth but the system the social strata and its civilization was nicely modeled and built by lucifer the custodian of the antichrist system and he built it such that 
our civilization will only thrive on economic empowerment please listen are we together now and part of the imbalance that we're talking about is what has produced believers who are prayerful loving but we have not paid attention to our finances and in this season our flaw is becoming obvious are we together many anointed churches are seen right now that they cannot buy generator for their prayer meetings many churches that will have to depend on rent or something the man the landlord may be an unbeliever and he may get up under the influence of a strange spirit and say no more use of this venue it is locked and what happens the sheep is scattered it's a strategy by the pit of hell because the bible says the borrower is and will always be slave to the lender so our concept of empowerment must be seen not just as a desire to be rich and to be money mongers please get this if that is your thinking you are already in error the concept of empowerment is to rise to a level where we overcome the influence of mammon that spirit that is is compelling the nations to worship her there is a spirit it's called mammon if you have not seen that spirit just look around our government and you will know that that spirit is being worshipped the obsession for the worship of images and the worship of lucifer did not start in our generation right remember when the king built 90 solid feet go and said at the sound of music everybody will bow down and worship and your survival in that territory depended on your willingness to bow some gentlemen said oh king no they found another system of exemption and they changed the tide businesses are bowing already churches are bowing already systems are coming to their knees i've heard men of god who didn't used to talk about certain things and i've been surprised hearing the way they are beginning to be so obsessed about financial principles that are not consistent with the ways of the lord and the reason is because for every leader what faith is to the realm of the spirit that's what finance is to this realm you must pay the school fees of your child are we together and that reality is beginning to punish a lot of people to the detriment of their spiritual life but everybody said there is a way out shout he said there is a way out the way out of financial hardship in this season goes beyond investments goes beyond business let me tell you what the Holy Ghost told me you see if you do investments you need money to make money is that true you need money to make money if you do business you are selling products you are selling services and that's all right but the problem is that the products you are selling have a fixed price and cannot be manipulated ordinarily are we together meaning there is a limit to what can come into your hand there is a limit to patronage and all of that but the key i've said it again and again is when you become the product yourself not just that you offer services you become the service when you become valuable not just have things that are valuable but you yourself as a person you rise to a point where you become an epitome of value you have entered your financial sabbath i guarantee you the most expensive commodity for instance on earth is the anointing and when you have the anointing we used to jokingly say it sometimes with a jimmy how that we watch people who we know do not know one maybe one twentieth of the business principles we should know but because they possess the most expensive commodity on earth which is the anointing and its ability to provide supernatural solutions they exempt themselves from the tide and the grip of mammon so god's call for us in this season as believers to exempt us from the economic turmoil that is whipping the nations and that will inevitably come and lash a lot of people in nigeria it's not only to surround ourselves with valuable things 
Valuable things are important, but be the value yourself. And we have that advantage because the Holy Ghost is here to help us. That's why I said your greatest business strategy in this season is to labor in the spirit and carry something authentic and supernatural. You will enter the Sabbath of your life. Do you believe what I'm saying? Please believe it. I can sell palm oil. Is it not when you need palm oil that you buy it? Are we together? I have palm oil in industrial scale. But until there is a demand. But you see, let me tell you something. The, rev the world revolves around certain things that will never uh, run out of demand. One of it is the anointing one of it is the realities that come from the life of a man in partnership with the holy spirit such that even in your business you are offering much more than the product first and foremost you have risen to a point where you have become so valuable then any other valuable thing around you only becomes a support not the basis for your confidence do you understand what i'm saying As harsh as the economic climate is, there are people moving as if it doesn't exist in Nigeria. Please, don't ever deceive yourself that everybody is crying. Let me tell you why we all look like we are crying. Because people have found out that if you don't cry with others, the, the anger and the pain, they will fight you back. So they just cry and say, cry. Honestly, God is, is faithful. But the truth is not everybody is crying. There are people who are far from crying. They have found the key. Every one naira that seems to disappear did not go out of earth. It's somewhere. It's in the hands of those who have paid the price to become valuable. I made up my mind that as God grants grace, I will pay the price to be so valuable. Because by God's grace, my life and this ministry should not come to a point where we are stranded and the purposes of the kingdom becomes jeopardized simply because of a, a God called Mammon. Look at me. Do you know that there are many of our families we have tried to bring them maybe for the meetings and they may not want to listen. But how many of you know that if we buy something tomorrow and we say everybody should come and line up? Vim, Omo, sewing machine, bikes. You will see people who swore that they will never come here. You see them standing. Even if they will not use it, they will get it and go and sell it and quickly use the money. That's the reality of economic hardship. And from the vision the Lord showed me, listen, people will do things that you will not imagine. Do you know in the Bible, women ate their children? The Bible says, can a mother forget her child? This one, a mother remembered as he ate the child. That's what finances can do. You talk about prostitution is child's play. When poverty hits people, they will make calls that they, they have not made for years. You see, if you do not empower your people, don't blame them for perversion. And I found out that you do not judge spiritual seriousness just from the face. You can see someone praying, but knows that there are seven people whose daily bread are dependent upon them. They will go and sleep with any allergy anywhere and bring the money. They will even bring it and so project 10,000. Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus. I exempt myself from this economic hardship. Say it in the name of Jesus. I exempt myself from this economic hardship. The Bible says when men say there is a casting down for you. He says you will say there is a lifting up there is a lifting up there is a lifting up but if you don't believe this sooner or later you will have to face the bitter reality of this prophetic word because it will happen i want to be honest with you i'm not one person who just prophesies everything i see but i i, I salute the government of this nation i know that they are doing their best with what they know and whatever covenant they are part of but I, I want to tell you one truth here. I don't see transformation happening very soon. 
let me tell you the truth all that have and, and I, I i don't mean to insult anybody but a lot of people have given so many prophecies you are going to see boom not 2016 it will happen for those who have the strategies but as far as the world is speaking you have not seen tears wait till july finishes I've, i'm telling you what i've seen you will see people sit down and cry like children i'm not talking of illiterates you will sit down and gather your degree and shed tears on it but for those who are hearing this thing and will pay the price to become valuable i tell you you will rise as if the devil does not exist it has nothing to do with age it has nothing to do with level of education hear me it has nothing to do with gender it has everything to do with having perceptions and receiving God's strategy for now. Don't sit down and confuse yourself saying this and that. I'm an astute businessman. Just keep quiet and let the Lord speak to you. I'm not daft. I understand business. If you hear me speak to you like this, it is what the Lord is saying per season. Let me tell you, what will give you bread is what God is saying, not what you know. What God is saying, the direction of God is the direction of favor. The direction of God is the direction of life. It's God speaking to us. You must challenge yourself to be valuable in this season. The devil is a liar. Kai, the devil is a liar. There is a spirit in Asia called Quatsi Quata. That's what the Bible calls Mammon. It's a spirit. Many of you have seen it. It's the image of a flying serpent, a flying dragon. That is the exact picture of Mammon. It's a spirit that will compel the nations to bow to its leadership. I assure you, many people will bow. The concept of 666 is not just something you receive on your hand and receive on your forehead. It's already happening. When a system compels you, receiving the mark is not just having a physical inscription. It's coming under the sovereign rule of that system so that you have no options. You have received the mark. Are we together? But God is going to grant us grace. We will come out in another dimension. No, 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 no. Listen, let me tell you. I don't know about you. But Koinonia will not bow to this system. There is a superior covenant. We have the rod of a higher priesthood. No devil, no spirit, no system. Will make us change our message. To tone down the apostolic work God has given. So that we can attract certain kinds of wealthy individuals. That's what is happening to pastors right now. There are certain messages you cannot preach. If it is not rich man friendly. Get set to sweep your church by yourself. So you have to tone down certain things. There are certain mainstream TV programs right now. Where you are not permitted to teach certain topics. It used to be that you can't mention the name of Jesus. But now they've taken it to another level. Certain topics should not be taught on mainstream. If you teach about pressure, how to manage it, how love, how people can, can come together, a gospel of universalism, marry anything, anyhow, anywhere, doesn't matter. You are, you are welcome. The mainstream invites you. But the moment you have an outspoken voice, the system will strangle you. And economic empowerment lack of it is satan's weapon of mass destruction it's worse than backsliding are we together pray in one minute and say i must be exempted in this season please pray 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 are you praying oh every time the devil tried to bring his arsenal and fight the church god is always one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead 
mundo ka kasunanta o bangi chika isaya bo mungil mama sunanta o bangi ji keep praying mundo ka kasunanta o bangi chika isaya bo mungil mama sunanta o bangi ji we raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Sunanka, O Bangi Jika Isaya, Nagir Mama Sunanka, O Bangi Jika, Nataoka Sunanka, O Bangi Jika Isaya, Nagir Mama Sunanka, O Bangi Jika, I tell you, we will not bow. Hey! Your banner high, we shine your light so bright. We sing in all of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in all of you. The grace to be valuable that when men say there is a casting down the bible says your gates shall be continually open it will not be short day or night right that you will receive the forces of the gentiles that's what the bible says you can be valuable and exempt yourself from the economic whiplash hear me I'm not talking of business. I'm not talking of investments. I'm talking of being so valuable. Carrying something that cannot be found in the earth realm. Carrying something that is not of an earthly origin. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Sit down. I told you there will be lots of impartations we'll pray. My passion is that something will come upon your life. Listen, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. When this glory of God comes on a man, it will change you. You will veto laws and walk as if Satan does not exist. Never trivialize the anointing. It's a big deal. I'm not talking of being anointed where you are competing with people and fighting. No. God raises you by his grace and puts you in a pedestal. No mammon. No devil. No policy affects you. It's a realm. It's a dimension. We frown at the supernatural. Because we think we're in an intellectual realm. Many times when pastors speak, a lot of business people just say, these guys are daft, they don't know what they're saying. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The voice of God. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. That is why I will not want. The Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd guides. He knows where the green grasses are. He says, he leads me. He leads me. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Right? I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to profit. Ubangi Jika Isaiah 
some of you this is what you will need you will step into a place and men will look for you who said where you are staying is too far you have not carried something when you carry something listen let me tell you when you know you are anointed when no price is too much to meet you you are really anointed when no price is too much to meet you have you watched people during foil scarcity they have their money but they still kill and they are not angry that's how valuable foil is when you get to a point where people don't mind trekking from anywhere to say i have learned that the wisdom of god is upon your mouth and we have come as a nation that's where joshua selman is going to Listen, Koinonia is not an exclusive reserve of preachers. Power was never for preachers. Power is for them who will survive in this season because there are gates that you must stand against and it takes the anointing it takes unction not stories not preaching unction listen churches are closing because there's no results we argue and say it doesn't matter but they are closing the devil is closing them the devil is closing them people are coming in with devilish policies against the church you know why they have not seen our relevance by the time a city cannot do without the church no devil will close it no devil will close it listen so the key is not just making noise the key is rising to that point please hear me when you become valuable listen listen if i give you five hundred thousand to go and invest you can make money if i give you a product to sell if this is 100 naira everybody you sell to you will sell at 100 naira so you move at their pace but when you become valuable your reward is left to the perception of your benefactors one person can see you and give you 100,000 because that's what he perceives the next person can give you 10 million because that's what he perceives is the key to accelerating ourselves to enter that wealthy place let me tell you some levels of businesses are too slow to supply the funds required for kingdom advancement it takes being valuable the queen of sheba there was no word on solomon she carried her treasure to solomon there are shebas there are cyruses that must arise with their treasure and I'm praying prophetically that someone tonight an unction an unction an unction from the throne an unction from the throne will come upon someone that will change your life where your voice becomes like the voice of God Listen, let me tell you this there will be no longer begging in the church all that depending on the world system no the key is not to sit down waiting for someone to employ you as good as that is the key has been given to us the holy ghost handing you the keys that can open any door and you will watch mammon mammon will watch you and not be able to do anything listen i saw this in the vision that the Lord showed me many people will be constrained their, their life it will be as if they should die because the doors are closed let me quickly talk about the two points we're rounding up there is a key that will conquer exhaustion in this season please write it down
there are many weary people and it's natural to be weary but let me tell you the key please hear me i want you to write it it's a very simple key spend time praying in the spirit spend time i didn't say pray in the spirit at will carelessly when you want spend time praying in the spirit i want you to fan your prayer life in a dimension that will be too hot for any devil bishop oyedeko said no matter how mad a man is no matter how mad a man is he will not enter fire in the name of madness are we together you want to survive the tides brothers and sisters let me tell you your prayer altar must be like the seven times hotter fire that they threw the hebrew boys the bible says those who threw them themselves were burned to death are we together you lie down on your bed you turn a little where your prayer creates an effect you enter your house as you are shouting in tongues something is happening you are shaking gates prayer read your bible has always been the key to true apostolic and prophetic revival when you pray let me tell you no matter how dead your spiritual life is when you invest in prayer you will burn that devil to nonsense he must give you more. i don't mean prayer that you are just asking and begging and crying that's why i said pray in the spirit because for many of us our prayer in understanding is petition and languishing and pain and anger but you lock yourself and you pray i'm not just saying when you are in your prayer room you are moving on the road you are praying beneath your voice somebody drops a charm at you it backfires on him by night he has become mad are we together someone is carrying a talisman and you are sitting down and you are going to sabo he will drop at main gates because the fire is too hot he makes listen he makes his ministers win spirits right his angel spirit and his ministers flames i've said it again I pity the herbalist that will make concoction and call my name. It's, it's not only that it will not work. If it didn't work, he has still insulted me. He will fry to death physically. Physically. I'm not, I'm not motivating you. You think they've not tried it? How can you be leading a ministry like this and not tried it? Only God knows till we get to heaven before we know how many poisons we have eaten. Let me tell you something. When your prayer life is alive and healthy, anytime you are walking, just imagine in your head fire, literal fire. Are we together? John Wesley said, Set yourself on fire, and the whole world will come to watch you burn. Set yourself on fire. Stop discussing things with people who cannot help you. Go and lock yourself. Your body says, I'm tired. You say you are joking. As you begin to pray, you will first feel weak for a few minutes. Keep praying. It's normal. Just keep praying. When you touch that escape velocity, you will touch a realm where strength you cannot explain will land upon you. You plan to pray for one hour, you will stretch five hours. Believe me, I know what I'm saying nobody starts praying just out of comfort it's like you are starting shake it you are tired you are moving you are tired keep praying don't say ah this and that the devil will tell ah, there's something in the fridge have you don't just keep praying oh apostle i'm praying and thinking about women keep praying that's what he's supposed to solve there is a level to which the fire will be too hot your flesh must burn and allow your spirit accent listen when the holy ghost is called fire it's not just what we do in church fire fire no he's real fire fire is a mystery those who will pray in this season will record unbelievable breakthroughs believe me travail you pray in the spirit 
thank God we have a very robust prayer department. You come there and stretch it out with destiny. After two hours, your antenna is to the heavens. Any demon is flying above you, they hang there. They hang there because you are passing. You are not even praying. The fire will roast every devil around anywhere. That's what we are talking about. Listen, many of us are too cold. That's why the devil will come and sit on your destiny. And it will look like nothing is happening. There are cold churches. A spirit will arise from somewhere and just come and sit upon the man of God and his wife and his family. But for Koinonia, no way. Shout no way. Fire. When there is fire burning, somebody will come with migraine as he's crossing that 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 junction to enter koinonia the migraine will just leave that's fire speaking that's fire speaking it works but if you walk it it's not a gift it's a labor in the spirit this is the labor dimension of spiritual growth men will pay you let me tell you your 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 job is to just become genuinely anointed by the power of God and you watch what God will do in your life it's what a Jimmy calls transformational wealth that dimension of wealth that is tied to people rewarding you because the last time they shook your hand every gate opened every every gate opened just by shaking you do you think they want to be your friend absolutely absolutely praying in the spirit becoming valuable praying in the spirit becoming valuable the third key in this season is the power of corporate fellowship the power of corporate fellowship if the devil can successfully isolate you in this season just know that you are quarter to die are we together there is a difference between isolation and solitude once the devil wants to destroy you let me tell you what he will do look up please he will use offense huh and push away everybody every intercessor in your life you will fight with him everybody who has grace and love for you you will fight with him he will push every relevant person push you to the wall alone and then that's where you sit down there and become a victim of his assaults a corporate life is a powerful key in the realm of the spirit the power of a corporate life that you come together and where I am almost giving up as you land with your fire based on unity of faith and the spirit of brotherhood before my fire jacks up your fire is roasting every devil that I came with are we together corporate fellowship how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it is like the oil that flows from the head of Aaron that priest down to his bed down to his cat he said for there the Lord has commanded the blessing corporate life I'm a man of God of myself you will pay for it in this season you need corporate grace corporate grace corporate grace because no matter what you have seen you will need that sometimes that corporate grace will help you confirm if the path you are walking is of God the devil can isolate you and you just keep moving and you are flattering yourself until you land in fire. Are we together? But Koinonia, we are going to pray. I don't know about you, but for as long as you are genuinely connected to this ministry, you must be exempted from this nonsense that is ravaging nations. It's like an angel of death is entering families. Bam! Sickness incurable diseases have you heard recently how people are dying just from headache they say somebody has headache before they rush into the hospital he's dead oh, come on a woman is pregnant just when labor starts she becomes deaf and dumb then she dies we are going to drive that devil out of zaria are you ready to pray no we are going to pray there is a church in zaria and we will pray we will pray and drive it far and say we surround this city with a mystery that makes any enchantment not to be able to thrive we represent god's seat of of governance in this city and we must pray there's no room for carelessness 
we must pray. Lift your voice and pray in tongues for a while. Make sure you participate, everybody. Don't be tired. We are praying. Young and old, everyone pray. Zaparata to soto preka teke rebeka tosh. Enkrete seka te barata barata kashiga ne barata ba. Rante ke te prosoto paka rata barata barata ba kasa baka te preka ne barata bosh. Zike te ke te karata kata flaba kata barata ba ka. Zapaka raka to soto preka te. Enkrete te go soto koto barata barata ba. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Anointing. Sing it as a prayer from the depth of your heart. Family members are depending on us, not our preaching. The activity of the power of God upon our lives. There are people standing here. Let me tell you, listen. This thing that I saw, there are families I know. I saw it happening to in that vision. And I like you to pray. You are not desiring the anointing out of covetousness. You need it. There are, there are thrones and dominions that must be subdued. And Apostle Joshua Selma may not be there. The goal is not to have one superstar. The goal is that you carry fire and go to your regions and begin to speak the purposes of God. And while you are doing that, God will compel men to lift you. It has nothing to do with ministry. Please, I'd like you to pray and say, Father, let a strange unction fall upon my life. Oh, let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. In this season, they that will survive must be men of power authentic unction unction beyond imagination unction beyond argument unction beyond argument unction beyond argument ta 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 ba ta ka para ka ta lord send that fire upon my life send that fire upon my gifts send that fire upon my degree send that fire upon my phd send that fire upon my business send that fire upon my company send that fire upon my church Send that fire upon my family. Mm 
Shekatekate Bakarako Soto Prekete Eskatapakanda Praskata Prekete Lekatekate Koroto Skoprondo Skibarakatia Shekatekate Soto Prondo Skoprikate Embrindaska Prekate Kate Oh yes, send that fire upon my life Send that unction upon my life The earnest expectation of creation awaits my manifestation Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. 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 Hallelujah. Listen, listen. One encounter with the anointing can give you an open door that your lifetime will not exhaust it if you believe what I'm telling you. One encounter, one, one encounter can open a financial door for you that will wipe your tears. One encounter can make you a friend to somebody who will pay your being a friend with him forever one encounter listen listen hallelujah i'd like you to pray a prayer you've heard us pray it here but i want you to pray it with all your heart everyone appointed to reward my grace i compel them to appear go ahead and pray it's not enough to have an anointing there are men who can reward your grace. There are institutions. Send them, oh God, to Koinonia. Send them to your people. Men and women. Who need what you carry? Your entrepreneurial anointing. Your leadership anointing. Your spirit of motherhood. Send them to my life, oh God. Men and women who have what it takes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Look up. Look up. I know very anointed men and women they love God passionately but they have never met the people assigned to bless them you don't preach for money you don't carry the anointing just for money but you see God designed it in such a way that as you dispense the realities of the kingdom there is a feedback system that should empower you so you continue being effective are we together listen the day you stand in the presence, you see, many of us are around people who love our gifts, but do not have the grace to reward it. Are we together? You can labor and pray and fast and go and preach somewhere and someone will pat your back and say, wow, you are an awesome man of God. I've never seen a man of God in this state like you. That's not enough reward. But there is a way you can have an encounter and someone will come and bring a generator, buy you a car, and say, what does it take to stop you from thinking about the finances? If you are such a voice, I should sponsor you rising to any level. There are men like that. There are some of us, the value you have now, let me tell you sincerely, the value you have now you, is, is enough for you to be blessed forever. But you have not encountered those who have what it takes. Listen, there are pastors, hear me, who until you preach somewhere where your helpers are, that's what will expand your church. All of a sudden, it will be like they are hearing you for the first time. Yes, I know there are millions of men of God in Nigeria, but there are others assigned to honor you, you, you. You can be singing, singing songs, laboring and traveling from pillar to post. 
But if you can discern, God can send you to somebody who has the means but needs your music. When it was time for the lifting of David, a spirit was upon Saul. And Saul needed a musician to drive it. All of a sudden, they went and fished out David. How many times did David play for Saul? When he played just once, Saul loved him. There are circles that I have entered and I ministered once and God connected me to people who will bless me forever. And that day, it wasn't even as if I was saying anything. It was just that God connected me to people who will be blessed. Tomorrow we're in Asaba, a mighty meeting happening in the stadium. And we are going to minister. They started preparing for this meeting tomorrow one year. One year. They came to book one year in advance. They have been praying logistics, publicity all over the city. And we are going to go and storm the gates of hell. There is some, you are not assigned everywhere. Look, you need to pray that those assigned to honor what you carry. Otherwise you will be frustrated trying to be everything to anybody. Lift your voice one more time. And say, direct them, oh God, direct them, direct them to me. Oh, in this season, direct my blessers, direct those you have sent to be blessed by my ministry, direct those you have been sent to be blessed by my business. On the Direct them. You are a prophet, but not to everyone. That God will bring the ears of those who have been anointed to hear your voice. You are an apostle, not to everyone. That God will direct the people, the institutions. Hallelujah. We're going to be praying that in this season, please hear me, that in this season, God will grant you grace to have passion for the house of God. That you will not allow the devil corner you somewhere and destroy you and destroy your family he said as for me and my house i don't know about you but as for me i have made up but the bible says they that be planted no flimsy excuses oh we are tired today they that be planted in the house of god they will flourish in the courts of our god i'd like you to pray passionately and say lord grace and passion for your house grace and passion grace and passion for your house supernatural grace supernatural passion for your house for your house for your house hallelujah hallelujah one category of people who will be exempted from any nonsense in this season are passionate and addicted soul winners listen listen there was a time they needed money to pay for tax it was a period that they needed money desperately they had come to collect tax and jesus said go and catch fish and fish in the bible is symbolic of souls when they caught those souls in that mission work they found money as they were preaching god provided a way as they were preaching fishers of men they went to fish and they said open the mouth of that fish as that fish testifies the greatness of god and confesses with his mouth the lordship of christ you engage a law automatically that brings you wealth. Hear me. Please believe what I'm saying. 
there are many people here who love God we are prayer warriors but we are not so winners you stand up alone and drag yourself to koinonia you wave your roommates you wave your family members you come here and get blessed while you are getting blessed the devil is using them to destroy your blessing you go back home a soul winner is an intercessor lord you must change my family members there are people who can come on friday and say look i'm going around this place have you heard about koinonia you've never really come you see this this our shame big boy big girl there are no big boys and big girls in the kingdom it takes passion when you are doggedly involved in soul winning you schedule seasons of exemption i can tell you this i can tell you this are we together you are in your office you are there and you leave every other person someone tells you uh -uh, um the devil is trying to manipulate my life or god jordan did something today that blessed me so so much some people came to his shop to buy books and the way they began to talk at once he knew it was a demonic situation god has given you spiritual intelligence there is a way you hear people talk what they are saying in the realm of the spirit is i need help you just listen to them and say bye bye the moment they began to talk you know oga jordan said this and that they wanted to see me and he said oh it may not be easy to see me. but he bought communion and took a bike and came and said i should pray on the communion and returned it back and gave the people and i was looking at him i said why won't he explode let me tell you if god if your life becomes an epitome of support for god's interest forget about begging this is the god i serve you may not know all you need to know but that your life can find space to bring god this is how this ministry started every night somebody was dragging somebody come and get filled with the holy ghost come and get born again you may not have the power to change them but you have what it takes to invite them some of you 50 naira is what you need to draw a soul ah koinonia has a crowd it's not about competition of crowd it's about destinies that must change are we together what's wrong with calling your loved ones and say there is there is a platform now to hear this online since you think you are too sick to come connect to the miracle service you see let me tell you something this is what we do that produces some of the results anybody that is too big to win souls is too big to experience the favor of god if you are too big to win souls too big to win souls ah i preached and they insulted me so what didn't jesus say it blessed are you when men persecute and revile you rejoice for so they did the prophets and the rest you have social media platforms that you can use as platforms to draw people to the house of god where they can be blessed you see until you see yourself as part of what god is doing you are not entitled to his blessings when you see yourself as somebody who just comes for koinonia leave the workers and the ministers when you exempt yourself you also exempt yourself from that covenant of blessing he said if you are the children of abraham you will do the works of abraham i'd like you to pray before i speak over our lives lord grace to be intentional about saving people from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray grace to be a conduit for someone to be filled with the holy ghost grace to be a channel for someone to receive the teachings that will change their life <laughs> there is a spiritual system for accessing deep hidden revelations there is a spiritual system for accessing strategies 
there are people on earth who have found this secret and their life becomes an unending wonder it looks like there is a fountain within them they have learned how to tap into an ability that is higher and greater than their age their level their education their everything this is what i want to teach you if you have this i can tell you happy easter if you don't have this we can rejoice for nothing and eat and go back and there is no glory in our lives there is a relationship between the sufferings of christ and the glory that follows the sufferings of christ and the glory that follows the sufferings of christ culminated in his crucifixion it didn't start in his crucifixion the sufferings of christ started right from his passion at gethsemane i hope you know that at gethsemane that's where christ became the second adam because two things happened to adam in the garden of eden first adam lost what we call righteousness right the nature of god he lost it he still had the likeness of god but he lost the image the holy spirit he lost so if christ were to be the second adam he would have to lose those two things too are we together now yes and the only condition for christ to lose righteousness is to become sin and he became sin through what we call in theology the doctrine of interpenetration that's what the communion is the mystery that two people become one a jimmy and his wife now as far as god is concerned are one she has her own body he has his body but in the realm of the spirit they are one whatever accesses him can access her without permission if he agrees she will pay for it because they have become one are we are we together now and the bible says that when that communion was broken remember i think i've taught this many times in this place that the reason why there were 12 men you see do you know why it was only men in 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 um in, in the upper room that's where they had the communion they were men because men are the carriers of the seeds and sin is transferred through reproduction are we together now women don't carry the seeds women only receive the seed and give birth to another life so the men there were standing 12 of them in number 12 is the number of government so they were there it was the whole world prophetically entering into that covenant where man can now christ can now take up the nature of man that's why he said if you eat my flesh and drink my blood you have your life so he broke himself and said eat and it gave access for him to carry the whole nature of man watch this then he went to gethsemane and he began to cry he said father if it be thy will let this cup pass what cup the cup was not death the cup was the holy spirit leaving him because the moment the holy spirit leaves him he cannot be in touch with heaven again <laughs> remember the connect of the mind remember it is the spirit When he said, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani, did the father reply? Because that which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. The Holy Spirit was not with Jesus on the cross. If he was with Jesus, the nails would not enter his hands. He had to leave Jesus. That was where the cry was happening. For the first time, the Trinity would be separated. And he said, can this cup, this cup of disunion, can it pass off me? He said, but it has to happen. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. That was the reason why when they held him from that time, everything that happened to him was happening to Adam and whoever came from Adam. You see that now? then when he was hung on that cross the bible tells us that you know the nails and everything and he stood there and listen to what he said he said father into thy hands i commend my spirit jesus now went to hell i hope you know that jesus went to hell to fight satan not with the assistance of the holy spirit he went as man adam to hell the Holy Ghost was not there. No, it was not there at all. You see that? If the Holy Ghost was there, Jesus would not be able to go where he's going. Are we together now? And he stood there, defeated Satan, collected the keys, 
and then on the third day that same spirit that had left him now came back if that same spirit that raised christ from the dead the bible says if that same spirit dwells now today in your mortal body it would do certain things i'm just giving us a little you know just play with our minds a little let's go back to what we are discussing he said that there is a mystery that activates the holy spirit searching the deep things of god and revealing it to us and it says tied to it is our glorification among the many things listen carefully among the many things that this mystery can bring is to transport the superior wisdom of god and to reveal them to man through the spirit that part of the blessings of the crucifixion of christ and the import of redemption is the ability to engage a mystery that causes the holy spirit to search the deep things of god and reveals to man the mystery that controls creativity the mystery that controls innovation the mystery that controls divine strategy the mystery that controls supernatural solutions the mystery that can stir up every dormant gifting and ability in man the hidden mystery let's discuss the technology of activating this mystery jesus number one write this down the first thing i want you to note is that the mind of god is a compendium of infinite wisdom write it down the mind of god god has a mind the bible says that the spirit can search everything in the mind of god even the deep things so write it down that god's mind god himself his mind is full of infinite wisdom number two whatever this mystery is we know that it is engaged by speaking write it down we're establishing something now please just help those under the anointing let's be sensitive i believe that god will be giving a lot of impartations the mystery is engaged by speaking so we know that for the activation of this mystery your mouth has a role to play now listen very carefully number three you see this thing we call speaking in tongues look at me everybody look at me we have missed a lot in it those who taught us speaking in tongues taught us that every time you open your mouth you are doing the same thing speaking in tongues has dimensions and all those dimensions have allocations in the spirit for what they achieve just because it looks like you are doing the same thing so you think every time you are speaking in tongues this mystery is activated by speaking there is the speaking in tongues that is for intercession there is the speaking in tongues that is engaging the mystery that makes the spirit of god to start searching the deep things of god it's not just that because you open your mouth you are praying i'm going to guide you you will understand what i'm saying shortly it is the mystery of speaking in an unknown tongue listen but the goal is not intercession nor supplication the goal is a system of reception that speaking in tongues is not only an instrument for intercession there is a dimension of tongues that you speak to receive you receive things in the spirit by engaging that mystery not just interceding for sinners not just praying there is a dimension of the hidden wisdom of god that every time you begin to utter tongues with that revelation and with that consciousness the holy spirit does not just come as an intercessor it's a message you are sending to the spirit that i am in need of a mystery and the holy spirit says i get the message you are saying there is a way you can pray that he knows i'm interceding for a sinner he joins you there is a way you can pray but that there is a tongue you can utter from the earth that is a message to the holy ghost i am stranded i need something for my glory and he goes and starts to search most of us think every time we pray in tongues because it sounds the same you think you are saying the same thing
those who have taught praying in tongues have only taught it with respect to accessing spiritual power like okay power if you want power just pray in tongues or if you want to feel like you're a prayer warrior there are all kinds of dimensions the same electricity powers a keyboard the same electricity powers fan the same electricity but there is a way you can channel it there is a dimension of tongues that is not for intercession it is a dimension the moment you utter it the spirit of god goes to the mind of the father that the end of that tongues is a revelation of something you did not know before you started praying that tongues cannot stop with you say amen and you go back no way no way Mm -mm. you don't just pray and finish the one you are praying when you pray just say thank you jesus lord i give you all the glory because you were interceding and you were building up your spirit man but that when you engage these tongues something must lead god and manifest physically you can hold it and say this is the answer i give you thanks then the secret was revealed to daniel a king came and said tell me my dream and the interpretation otherwise i would destroy you daniel showed us i don't know what daniel did in the night he said king there is no man that can know this thing no he said but wait before you kill us give me time in the night when others will help that lady please in the night when i don't know what daniel did but all i know is that daniel tapped into a frequency in the spirit and Daniel received this let me tell you this listen very carefully I know this because there was a prayer Daniel was praying that made Gabriel to come to earth not to fight but to bring a message it's in your Bible he was praying a prayer many people say that no it was not a it was not just a prayer of warfare a Gabriel said I am sent something about your prayer called heaven i am come with the answer understanding and the bible says this mystery god ordained it for our glory daniel was an ordinary man these saints in the bible were ordinary people it is these mysteries that turn them to become like gods upon the earth what kind of men are these they want to kill somebody and a human being with flesh and blood says give me time he goes to the secret place and says king i have your answer and the king looked at him the dreamer forgot his dream the dreamer forgot his dream and someone went to bed and all of a sudden came back this one is not word of knowledge oh this is a download of a strategy word of knowledge gives you in part this one comes to give you an information imagine what that would do to your life imagine that you can tap let me tell you listen without this strategy you will never move forward in life you will get to point where you will stay grounded nothing on earth has the capacity to move you and the spirit of god just stands and, oh i'm born again ba, 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 ba. you can pray for three hours and intercede for everybody and the holy ghost will say if you know this is what apostle paul that guy was a dangerous guy that paul you see paul came and saw the believers and knew what was wrong he knew what was wrong with their spiritual life you guys are zealous you guys pray all the time but there's something you don't have let me teach you remember they were filled with the holy ghost already what he did in chapter 12 14 was to explain to them but paul saw that they were not maximizing certain things he said let me teach you you see all these mysteries i share let me show you how they come this is paul teaching now paul says i am ordinary some of the apostles knew jesus before me but i was taught this mystery and every time i engage it it was while paul was doing this that the holy ghost brought him a mystery he said church let me arrange the gifts of the spirit now in a way that will profit the body that's not normal you don't do that by education let me tell you there are things god has brought to me by this truth you see ba, when the truth of scripture comes to you from heaven you may not be able to share everything 
but there are truths some of this system of operating in the anointing this is how they came a visitation son this is how this thing works if you understand what i'm saying brothers and sisters the next time you go to pray many of you will have some of you have done it unconsciously that's why you see people come to testify i went to bed and i had a visitation no nobody just comes they are called they may use the face of a man they may god had mercy on you you just knew you were praying something about your prayer called heaven listen read your bible and see men who called heaven some did not get an answer some got an answer the bible calls it a mystery how could god leave men on earth without an assistance do you think god knows god does not know that you need to prosper do you think god does not know imagine the sicknesses in this world do you not know that even the anointing most of us are stranded we don't even know how to use it effectively it is the holy ghost that comes look at jesus jesus saw a man and knew that the only thing that will heal this man is to spit on the ground he never repeated it again a mystery that came look at how joshua it was divine strategies that gave people victory in the bible none of those strategies were repeated again they happened just once they, they how can a man look and say i will go over a, a jericho seven times knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and can look at that gentleman who gave a testimony he had it's a it's a true testimony i got i got it too he broke his I, I i don't know whether he broke his teeth or i think they were supposed to remove four of his teeth or something an accident and then something else happened to him and the gentle i don't know what he did though but the gentleman said he went to bed and all of a sudden a revelation comes and he gets up and he's God. nothing just happens like that it's not true there is a dimension of god's glory that will never manifest in our lives for as long as all you think will bring you glory and greatness in life is just certificate or wisdom from age or just searching google how to be rich enter how to do business enter how to be a good wife enter for as long as that's what you are doing that's sophia the wisdom of men there is a superior dimension most of us know it but you think it just comes just by looking at the bible alone no there is a dimension where you can call for the assistance of heaven there are certain things let me tell you god taught me about the anointing he taught me not by saying he taught me by imparting that knowledge i can't teach it because it was not true words it's, it's a lecture but it came like a software see what makes men unusual is the mysteries that upgrade their lives not their skin not their body when you see an ordinary person and you see a dimension of result that is not human go back and ask either a witch or a wizard appear to that person or something must have happened in the realm of the spirit hmm. are we together that you can go back and look at your family and they can say what is special about the easter and he said lord there has to be an answer to what is happening in this family are you not seeing the way our families are how many of you have seen that the solution cannot come from it the deep things of god there are pastors stranded in ministry look at the foolish instructions people do to rise in life it does not sound human but because it came from the mind of god it produces strange results go around the city seven times because it came to a man he went round and the city collapsed are we blessed i'm sharing with you a reality that i've worked in myself stupid things but came i know how to call for help from heaven if you don't know in this wicked world the devil will eat you up and spit out your bones
it's not every tongue that is just for building up your spirit there is a dimension of praying in tongues that is a cry of mercy in the realm of the spirit i need assistance oh god i am stranded except you help from heaven i cannot do anything and all of a sudden an emissary is sent from the realm of the spirit and comes to deliver as desired paul said the hidden wisdom that god ordained for our glory are you getting blessed now let's continue let me show you something go to verse 10 verse 10 please sit down sit down thank you sit down he says but god has revealed them to us listen carefully he says by his spirit for the spirit searched all things yea the deep things of god that's why we stop right now paul is trying to explain to them that the holy spirit is the searcher of these things but now he's telling us that there is a limitation to this thing and here's the limitation go ahead he says okay if we have read go to verse 12 verse 12 now we have received the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we may know the things that are freely given to us 13 which things we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the holy ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual 14 but the natural man now watch this this is the limitation to this experience once you are natural excuse me once you are natural he says but the natural man cannot receive these things why he says for they are the nature of that mystery is such that you must be a child to be able to receive it it's too childish for natural people to access it what is it in a dance and breakthrough what is it in an instruction and miracle alert these are manifestations of the hidden wisdom of God for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned two more verses 15 but he that is spiritual judges all things yet he is judge of no man 16 for who had known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him the word instruct him there is not just to direct him who had known let's let's see what amplify says amplify puts it beautifully there give us amplify for who has known or understood the mind the counsel and the purposes of the lord so as to guide and instruct him and give him knowledge he said but we have the mind of christ and do hold the thoughts the feelings and the purposes of his heart it's a question he was asking who there he says who which ordinary man knows the mind of christ that he can even instruct him he said we do not qualify to know the mind of christ but by that spirit he says we have the mind of christ we have access something that men cannot have the ability to hold the thoughts the feelings the purposes of his heart men rise in this kingdom through the mysteries that they know men rise in this kingdom your life and my life is not just going to rise just because of our education as good as it is your life is not going to rise just by the informations there are things in your life the answer is not in any book on earth there are things there are solutions in your life that need to come that there is no other way of accessing it I show you a system that was created in the kingdom for our glorification someone met me one time a gentleman and he said he works in the bank and he said they gave them an assignment to bring a particular target me too when I had that amount I said Habba where is this guy a thief where is he going to go and raise that kind of money within one month or whatever let me tell you there are things in your life you stand and look at this mountain you do everything you know to do it will not move at that level you stop trying you allow the spirit of god remember i told you the mind of god is a compendium of infinite wisdom i dare to tell you there is an answer to every question it just depends on who tells you the answer 
there is an answer the bible is full of men women people who they, do you know do you know i believe with all my heart that it was part of this hidden wisdom that guided solomon to give a thousand bond offering yes he loved the lord but that kind of thing cannot be normal it's not just no it's not just a, will you carry a thousand bond no solomon there is a formula to get what you are looking for and it directed him and he did something that was foolish and god came he said you called me he didn't say you slaughtered animal you called me i'm here solomon what should i do for you and solomon said so this thing works ah look at the kinds of instructions that would come you guys are not going to win oh. why you are not circumcised ah what is the relationship between my being circumcised and holding a knife i am a warrior the angel said you can go and fight and die like a chicken i've told you the force that controls this result is your circumcision not your sword so if you want to win circumcise everybody imagine the enemies watching men sit down for seven days they can't walk they can't move he said what's wrong with these people warriors he said a, a ghost came and said we can't win your knife is sharp but you are not circumcised and he said you cannot win david went and carried five stones does that make sense to you carried five stones to kill a giant when he came and stood before goliath goliath said abba david me Re i know i will kill you but at least respect me am i a dog is he a dog that you are chasing he didn't know that that thing was a mystery there's nowhere where stone was carried to kill anybody except the one that the angels use hailstone to kill people a mystery was revealed to that young boy and he stood before goliath with his foolishness and arrogance and took his head down used his knife cut it and gave it to the birds that one experience brought him a wife he became tax-free are we together his family was exempted from all and he was given great wealth and honor say the deep things of god say it again the deep things of god let me tell you this you know why i'm teaching you this because there are many people who believe just because you prophesy and say in the name of jesus enter a new dimension everything will change about their lives most men of god will want you to believe that just because they prophesy everything will change there are answers that must come to you from heaven by yourself that you go to bed in the night and wake up with something that works for only you nobody who applies what was revealed to you that it will work for it was sent from heaven for you are you getting what i'm saying now i don't mean to be disrespectful but you can get up and see just because you don't see koinonia posters around you now go and then don't produce poster too for you is copy and you find out that no people say i don't know what you are doing you didn't inform me i said ah, but how are they doing it here they are not just doing it here it was received that's why it's working and you mean you were there when i told you god gave me the solution for the spreading of koinonia messages is there i came and told him i said god has given me the answer no selling videos no packaging anything put it online and the lord said he will give it wings that was the instruction the hidden wisdom for our glory look the blessing that the lord has brought today because of the ability to access the deep things of god brothers and sisters imagine other things that can happen to your life imagine how the god can end that mockery in your family overnight by one encounter with the wisdom of god do a b c and you stand up foolishly and do it and that's the end of it Do you believe what i'm telling you listen there are there are families that are suffering that even welfare can't help them no matter how you give to them the the level of trouble in that family is such that even one destiny helper cannot be able to help them
because the need is recurrent it's not one time if they eat today there's no hope 11 people nobody is educated nobody went to school nobody can do any business they are all old brother you need something that is not in this earth this is a message of hope this is a message of hope young men listen to me if you don't access this you will never be established in your life i promise you fifty thousand per month will not establish you for life i give you a guarantee go and put your money in the bank and get five percent per annum and let me see how much in 10 years that's 50 percent and see how much that will help to build your life most successful people will never tell you everybody knows what he did in the secret you are just seeing the result a man gets up from nowhere and builds an estate they call it favor but they won't tell you the dynamics your favor is real i testify your favor is real your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your goodness is real i testify let me tell you this in one of the days of the seven days prayer and fasting i went to the lord and i prayed a simple prayer and i went to bed now this this these are occurrences that happen to me all the time i was i woke up in the night and usually i go to bed there was no light and i woke up and found out someone had on my lamp my lamp physically now these are experiences that happen to me all the time opened my lamp and then i saw no not this book another one opened and a biro there i i know because i knew the moment i see this i know god wants to speak to me and i just said lord i'm ready to write and one two three four god just brought something to my life i said that's it god whatever it is you have done for me i rejoice forever i cried for over one hour seven days prayer and fasting i said my god my god brothers and sisters if your eyes is not open from heaven you will not see if your ears are not open from heaven you cannot hear a man can receive nothing except it is given to him you hear me tell you this a man can you hear me just prophesy and say in the name of jesus it's not just what i'm speaking there is something i receive that is released through what i'm saying that creates the effect when i say the part it's not just because i'm anointed everybody operates by the secrets that are working in their life hallelujah I share this thing with you because I want God to surprise you that you can see this a family that have no business buying a car they don't know nothing about finances they can access something and in two weeks all of them are on their knees saying God what is this where did this one come from listen the Bible says it was meant for our glorification not our shame God does not lift men to bring shame to their lives we don't know his system it's a mystery that Paul used think how many times they tried to kill Paul think how many times they tried to do whatever they would do with Paul there is no such thing as hopelessness for any man once you are alive you are only hopeless until the mystery leaves heaven and gets to you that's why the prince of Persia fought the information not the angel no don't get this to Daniel if Daniel receives this something will happen let me tell you that fight was not Old Testament fight that fight is a fight that happens every time something is leaving heaven and coming to you satan will he knows that one thing that will he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel he sent a word to one lady and it changed the story of our generation that nobody in your family rises to a level and all of a sudden something enters you
and you just turn and let me tell you i can know what has entered you by the results that follow these things eh? take your eyes away from physical things when god gave me this physical things are remote controlled forget all these things you desire it's not by chasing them there is a central control button in life i guarantee you that brings you these things one of it is this physical results you have seen it happen in this ministry you have seen it again and again no man can do these things except god be with him i'm saying this to you because the reality of the death of christ is useless until your life brings glory to your family we keep mocking ourselves as christians going everywhere jesus died for me i am born again there is nothing that symbolizes glory not in our lives not in the life of anybody every unsaved person is still unsaved there is something you and god can do that will make the hardened sinner in your family within two weeks you will come one night and hear him listening to a message from your phone you say sorry sir this is a christian message say you don't know what happened to me just leave me quietly you just know that god has come to your family something you did called for his help and he came hallelujah you hear that lady one point hand is touched changes to four points you try it and see if it will change it's not the hand it's the mystery it's not the hand so most people just think oh i will just confess just because the bible says to speak and in the name of jesus i decree and declare oh receive this and you find out nothing happens because you see it is what supports what you are saying not just the speech itself you may not know but your results begin to show first you would think it's a coincidence so you are not sure you are even afraid of the result but then you see that it becomes predictable predictable ah, ah. someone blessed sam today in the evening someone blessed him next tomorrow someone blessed him next tomorrow someone blessed him and you find out that no this this is not so your little church one member comes then the next thing five people come you see somebody who say i'm a keyboardist my friend is a drummer the lord just led us to your church say no but this can't be a coincidence i've been in ministry for 10 years no there is no coincidence everything is intentionally calculated even the disappearance of favor from your family was intentionally programmed it will take something from the spirit listen there are some of us here you graduated with a third class let's tell ourselves the truth if it is in this nigeria there is no human being who is going to employ you ordinarily i'm not making you scared there are some of us who what we have studied with all humility what we have studied that value is not celebrated nor needed in nigeria it's the truth there are some of us because of the tribes we come from there are wicked men that sit in positions in this country and make sure they frustrate you there are some of us even if you collect salary the 10 other people in your family who need you to eat will make that salary look like 10 naira you need to access these mysteries are we together you need to access these mysteries i will show you how oh god i'm grateful oh god i'm grateful oh god i'm grateful time will tell whether we are just talkatives or dispensers of the mysteries of the kingdom time will tell whether what you are receiving is a cunningly devised fable or is a programming that will make you surprised at your own life that somebody will look at you and say i know you are a villager you say you you insulted me for 30 years but i found something that in six months brought glory to my life that you will bring the gospel to your family you bring the not just the gospel you are able you may be the last born but this thing does not do with age whoever can get the holy spirit to bring you something from the mind of god you will change your life understand this 
you see all these manifestations that happen it's not just the anointing you see let me tell you something with when you catch a spiritual mystery there is an effect of that understanding on your environment you see that so every time people come under that circumference they're even without directly receiving it they become benefactors of that experience it's true if you have a vision and you see an angel now anyone within that vicinity will benefit there are others that opening of that portal insight will come to them they were not praying just because you open the portal someone will benefit from it the prophet opened the eyes of another person he never said do you have faith do you believe because he could see someone's eyes open But the natural man, the man who is scientific, the man who laughs at anything that is of God, the man who looks at all these things and says, look, let me tell you, I, I went to Harvard Business School. I'm a smart man. I know everything about economy. I, I went to so, so, so business school. Nothing is wrong with that. I did this and that. Look, I'm a smart gentleman. I got this and that. The Bible says those kinds of people, to them when you are talking like this they are some of these bloggers that write nonsense and extract messages like this and say look at the rubbish that they are teaching members and another natural man who concur and say yes so they teach people to dance in church they teach people to jump like fools ah religion the opium of the masses i don't know who taught that but what i am telling you is the mystery that men have accessed and produced wonders with you see if this ministry was not successful many of you think you are just talking just because of this is let me tell you something with results results strengthen your message are you hearing this now that's why for many of you no one has received your gospel results defy argument you can argue with a man but you can't argue with results a woman can be barren but when that woman is pregnant it's not water that is in her stomach it's a human being this earth you see is like a computer game whoever has the control button will make nonsense of satan in this earth there are things i have learned that have surprised me how satan hid this thing from the church and those who access these things are those who do witchcraft and scientology and all of this so the condition is they initiate you into those devilish things they say come they put incisions they do all kinds of occult groups and then they show you something that has always been there always been there you sell your soul to the devil for money you sell your soul but and, it, and you know we preachers insult people why sell your soul but hunger was it no hunger that took Israel to Egypt? If they were satisfied, they would not go. There was hunger and they all went. Hunger is still taking men to Egypt. We must be able to find a system to make Goshen fruitful so that they don't need to go to Egypt. Don't sit down and tell people, uh, why, why are you doing this? Why will you go and sleep with a man to get uh, a job? Can you, do you know the mystery that can give the sister the job? Come, let me pray for you except i'm a man of god you will get a job in two weeks five years she has not gotten the job and she just says don't mind this guy my family is dying there and this arrogant pastor wants to leave me in pain but happy are you brothers and sisters that you can look at a man and enter a family and they said look look at us sorry we're embarrassed there is nothing to eat our father is about leaving jesus christ and saying that by next week he's going to go to a herbalist in the village and you say daddy give me 24 hours something will happen in this house give me 24 hours and the man says you are a young boy we did all this jesus thing those days in boys brigade he said no problem i agree with you sir just allow me and within 24 hours something happens and the man calls you and says sorry i don't understand i'm, I'm a proud man i usually don't talk to small boys but sit down and you tell him jesus is still the way jesus is still the life. truth jesus is still the life how about that my herbalist leave him i brought you the reality he said he gave it for our glory listen hear me church 
if we trivialize the desperation of men to see the glory of God in their life, we will lose our members to occultists. Did you hear what I said? Any pastor, any prophet, any apostle, any man of God that trivializes the importance of the members experiencing the glory of God, I guarantee you a day will come our young men, our keyboardists will go to shrines because they must eat. They must become, they will become herbalists. Our ladies will go and fraternize with the gates of hell. We will be there jumping on stage, dispensing all kinds of things. There are things that pertain to life and godliness. Not just godliness, to life. Your child must go to school, to life. Your child can be born again and not be educated. And as a result, your child will become a slave to every other person. There are some of us, everyone in your family works for someone. They distribute them to go and be slaves. You are 10 in your family. Nobody can stand alone. You, go and help this uncle wash his car. You, Abba. Your goodness is real. I testify your goodness is real. Your kindness is real. I testify hallelujah look at someone like Kenny look at this gentleman I, I don't mean to make him feel bad his dad has gone to be with the Lord his mother has gone to be with the Lord everybody that can help him in life has gone he's on his own it's easy for a preacher who has food in his house to run your mouth and say you will make it and leave this gentleman by the time he suffers his sister is crying everybody is crying this guy will get into gambling he will get into occultism he will get into every kind of demonic thing that's what we are, we are losing our members in church because they are not seeing the reality the validity of what the word says we are losing our ladies to ungodly people we are losing our gentlemen our fathers are becoming herbalists covenanting generations in shrines because hunger is taking them to egypt i will never preach a god who is not alive it's a vow i made right from when god called me I will preach a God that can be proven here and now that he is not only the saver of souls he's the lifter of men he's the anointer of men he's the revealer of secrets I love you too much some of you as you are hearing me now you check your phone and you see missed calls from your loved ones we have not eaten for three days please if you're a man of God here let's take people seriously let's not just be acting games with people's destinies I bring you good news there is a way out there is a way out there is a way out we have orphans in this place we have widows in this place we have widowers in this place it's not their fault that they could not be educated do you blame a child was it his fault you see a woman of 60 years with her two children there is no physical hope of any breakthrough they are the ones who give us offerings and we collect as men of God. They are the ones who carry their last money and kneel down and give us. Our job is to collect and eat. Let me tell you, God will soon start punishing us men of God who are collecting people's offering and not giving them the truth that will lift them. After service, I can stand here and some of you will carry your last money and come and give me and I will collect and go back. Who will betide me if I don't teach you the truth? It's not fair we keep destroying people's destinies in the name of church look at how many young men sit down and they are asking man of god you are established me i'm not show me now so that both the sower and the reaper will rejoice but i keep telling you you just keep sowing in my life and sit down there while i am enjoying it as i'm talking to you now my food is ready some of you you love god but right where you are there is no food for you to eat how long will this continue we say it's Easter. Jesus died. He conquered Satan. Oh, dead. Where is your sting? We mock ourselves in church. And the only people who rejoice are the men of God. Your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify. Listen, gentlemen, let me teach you something. There are things you can learn 
you will bring one song one song not ten songs nobody rises as a result of a full album there is one song that comes from there is the one you compose that your worship teammates will clap for you and with it they will invite you to two or three ministrations and you go back as usual but there is one that comes from the throne you will sit down and hear them playing it in africa and you will mint money as if you are a charmer and god says that's not the issue i'm just proving to you that everything from above is above all there are some of you there's one idea that this mystery can bring you go and meet someone and say sir this is it and the person says because of this come i will read the bible look at modern history and see people's lives change when you hear some of the songs that heal song right look at the young guys they are not even neatly dressed you know that this one is the grace of god upon a vessel you ask them to compose songs by themselves and see the rubbish they will write there are music artists in this nation we all know where they got their songs from it does not make sense and it has blessed them that's to tell you there is a force that is not human you listen to it you can't stop something in it draws you most of us write songs you carry a paper and a bible and sit down with the consciousness of the hunger that is in front of you and you just find a scripture where will i lift up my eyes two times i will say amen i will say amen the lord be praised two times it will never never sell not in this kingdom if if listen you are laughing i'm very serious with what i'm saying if it is god's result it must come from him there are pastors that love god doing everything they were taught in bible school but it's not working because the forces that keep men down the forces that keep men down can only be dislodged by an intelligence that is not earthly as for me joshua selman I have made my choice that this is how i'm going to live my life my life is too risky to be human this the earth is too wicked for me to live just as a human being i must live as a divine being because it is he that cometh from above that is above all are we together we have doctors here if you follow the normal course the thing they are doing in shika you will never really rise because one day you will see somebody who will look at you and say dr david i know you are qualified dr halima but because you are not from my village i sit on your destiny i am professor this and that and he says all right sir you go back and engage this mystery and come out and in his presence he will sign you as you are rising tomorrow he will come in the dedication of a foundation and you just say, ah that is a is my own i wanted to tell you that i didn't stop rising after all of your mockery my god is still alive listen don't you dare laugh at any man that understands what i'm saying they may carry their 200 naira trouser and surprise you i bring you a message of hope brothers and sisters this storm that rage over our families will not rage forever there is a way out this easter there is a way out there is a way out the way out is to be able to access this hidden mystery now sit down let me explain to you the last thing and then we'll pray Hallelujah. pray i'm already seeing an electric cable sparking this is what i'm seeing in the spirit hallelujah the overflow by the roadside there's someone receiving a healing anointing that overflow overflow two now There's someone receiving a healing anointing. A healing anointing. That's what I'm saying. A healing anointing. It will be by the Spirit. You may not be a preacher, but you are receiving it. And it will change your life. Oh, what business can lift me? Let me try this. Let me try that. And you keep crying. You access this mystery and you are sitting down and here it comes and your life rises and changes 
I know a woman years ago. She she got into Coca-Cola business. And the only reason why she got into Coca-Cola business was because she was just sitting down according to what she told me and it was like a vision. And she saw a like a what they call this thing this thing they buy container and she was bringing coca-cola from it immediately she knew that this was where my prosperity was you see why many of us keep trying things and wasting our time you are trying you need to receive god knows where your money is your money is not everywhere it is in the place directed geography matters when it comes to do prosperity isaac sowed in that land And the woman started it mysteriously help started coming for her and that was how this woman rose up do you know when i spoke with this woman from what i know about financial intelligence i i saw how unfair life can be for such a woman to be prospering i think the only thing that woman may know is just how to count money and all of that but just because she was directed the lord is my shepherd and so i shall not want hallelujah the character of this kind of prayer listen carefully let me tell you the difference between praying in tongues the prayer language for your spiritual building your edification and the prayer that is for reception number one when you pray this kind of prayer listen the kind of prayer that receives is not a prayer that is done with aggression your mind has to be alert listen carefully i'm giving you there are certain kinds of prayer that the power of god comes upon you you are praying in tongues you must exert energy because of the gravity of what is happening in the spirit these tongues these tongues you see is the kind of tongues that as you are communicating god allows your mind to still be alert because something is happening as you are activating certain things ideas are coming it's not just the kind of tongues that you go to the forest alone and you are shouting this one you are praying you are receiving something is coming from heaven for you to receive your mind must be alert as you pray your mind must be alert as you pray it's not every kind of prayer that your mind is alert. There are times you are just praying. Sometimes you are not even yourself. Five hours will pass, you don't know. Because there is a dimension. But when you are praying to activate this mystery, your mind must be alert to receive that which God is bringing. Number two, listen. Everything received must be documented or preserved immediately because of the nature of how spiritual things are listen carefully spiritual things are very volatile you can lose a spiritual information in five minutes and it will take the grace of god to receive sometimes it can be a vision that vision you can't understand it immediately so you find a way of preserving it my phone is full of voices of encounters sometimes i'm praying and the things i'm seeing i start recording it immediately because i know if this thing sleeps it may not come back again I, is somebody getting this now most of you when these kinds of things happen you say no problem let me finish my three hours prayer and it leaves never comes again that was a five years breakthrough that just disappeared in one strategy you see why prophets were writers when i'm praying i pray with my books my bible is on my hand my phone everything because there are times i will need to draw there are times i will need to quickly write there are times i will need to record i get up in the morning i i found out that sometimes writing is too slow how many of you have gotten up and you literally had seconds to preserve something seconds if it escapes that second sometimes when god is merciful to you he will draw you to start praying you think you are just praying you are repeating the same thing and there the dream comes again are we together let me tell you something i have gotten information in pieces that the complete picture came within the span of three years spiritual things are very strange you can get one part you need to preserve it because you will need that part the other part will come december the next year 
and then the last piece comes january when you piece three of them together they equate a dimension of breakthrough that your life will never recover from so when you are praying these kinds of prayer you can go to the place of prayer knowing that my purpose of prayer is to receive a strategy i'm going there lord i'm going to receive and all of a sudden you are praying you are praying you are alert you are alert there are sometimes in the midst of your prayer you will find out that the grace to pray supposedly lifts you can't pray again don't just get up and say it's a demonic attack be silent his voice is coming something is coming most of us don't understand these dynamics of prayer there are times you are praying and you just feel like sitting down somewhere help them please and you just sit down somewhere quietly like a zombie you are even afraid because you don't want people to think that you came and you were joking you see the mistake we make when we get to the place of prayer we just shut the door and make sure everybody around is hearing us to justify our spirituality we are cheating ourselves of dimensions there are times you can go to prayer and for two hours nobody has heard you you've not even started the prayer you are sitting down and for two hours you are like a librarian dictating mysteries that you yourself don't understand one day god will say remember what i told you go to your book page 75 check the last column that's the answer for what you are looking for there are times that i've gone to make reference to books things i wrote 2008 2009 i just remember i've seen this image somewhere and god says remember i go and look for the book i remember when koinonia was going to start that's when i remembered that god had revealed that thing to me 2005 i now when i was searching the book immediately i opened i saw everything revealed verbatim do you believe what i'm sharing with you we're going to pray many of us lose it listen to me every time you stand before a challenge and you want to pray don't just go and wail oh god you too you know how we are if you don't arise you can cry you can do everything you want to do but the moment you pray do you know many times you will see your prayer alternating you know that the last 30 minutes was warfare the next 30 minutes is not warfare that that prayer they all have their characteristics you can know that i was praying for two hours but the last 20 minutes of that prayer is this one is is a serious warfare what is happening you thought that after two hours it will go and all of a sudden a grace for prayer comes again and you can push through another two hours there are times you go to pray you cannot even reach 20 minutes if you are not careful you will think you are backsliding it is the context of the communication of the spirit religion is a dangerous thing it will destroy your prayer life there are times i've sat down to pray from morning till evening and i'm unable to say a word highest worship is just playing i want to get up and maybe the only thing i can say in that prayer session is thank you jesus thank you jesus i give you all the praise thank you jesus here it comes i'm writing thank you jesus okay teach these people this thank you jesus your people don't understand this thank you jesus the way to go about this is to do a b c d thank you jesus okay don't worry i will reveal to you the answer during leaders meeting thank you jesus they that are led by the spirit of god you see when you understand what i'm teaching you you will not only command signs and wonders your life will be a sign and a wonder we win in life by strategies if naomi never went to the farm of boaz she would never marry marriageable but no strategy if the walls of jericho the people carried their sword and tried to bring down that gate they would have slaughtered them like chickens just the arrows from the watchmen would kill them and destroy them it takes strategies to win you have dreams where is the strategy when i meet pastors they tell me their message but they don't tell me the strategy god said go and raise me a people where do you think these people are and how are you going to fulfill that mandate a friend called me and he said um i should advise him is it right wonderful friend that i love 
he said is it right for him to continue raising offering in church i said well i don't have a problem with it but go and find out how god designed the finances of your ministry to run go and pray and receive a strategy do you know the challenge with the body of christ we copy everything without thinking about it we copy if i start rolling this um, um what do you call it my trousers are now here i do it for two weeks as foolish as it is of course i know it's because you love me and you believe in the word of the lord upon me you will be surprised how somebody will go for lecture with trouser road like that he will never ask and say sorry is it an instruction that is followable or is a unique dealing or you, you are, your leg is just paining you and you think you are doing this we copy everything and sometimes to our detriment are we blessed I want you to get results you have to be at alert you have to be focused you have to be discerning one of the ways that we engage these kinds of tongues is to write down all the issues of concern and pray while you look at it there is a relationship between your eyes and the realm of the spirit this eye is not just for looking you can write these things house rent god what is the way out are we together now ministry is not growing i'm trusting you for the healing anointing i've read everything i know what is the way out you are walking around and you just allow the holy spirit pray through you all of a sudden you will just get an idea go down to zaria see apostle let him lay hands on you you see you think that that thing just came there is no other man of god you will meet no matter how anointed that will impart that healing anointing because the instruction is already tied to a vessel sometimes it may not even be to see a man of god there are graces when i wanted god led me to specific people and places i remember i've shared some of them with you we just do things at random no divine direction hallelujah i will never forget one day i was asking god a very serious question about ministry and all of a sudden literally as if as if a force came my hands were shaking and before you knew it i still don't know the name that i typed a youtube video enter and all of a sudden one old old gray baba just appears like this with one 25 minutes message and i listened to it that message changed my life I searched for other videos the, the message did not even finish but it contained my answer hallelujah are you blessed you have to learn this if you must rise there are two ways to rise in life hustle if you want to keep moving around and knocking or go to God and say my God show me the way show me the way God can help men oh koinonia hear me my God can help men this trial and error we are doing with our lives is too much sometimes the injury that will come from trying may not allow you to try another day again so the key is to be circumspect access the deep things of God if you're naming tonight's message then is is titled accessing the deep things of god i'm giving you a secret this is what i do with my life lord i thank you sometimes a scripture is coming sometimes the voice of god comes for you sometimes a mystery comes sometimes an instruction comes you see that god can give you all kinds of foolish instructions let me tell you do you know there was a day I do this every once in a while but there was a day God instructed me I was just lying down I, I wasn't asleep and I was praying and all of a sudden I just sensed the anointing and all of a sudden the Spirit of God told me stand up and lie down flat on the ground like get up from your bed oh, and lie imagine if somebody opened my door he said this is it I've, I've, I've always known that this guy there is something occultic he's doing and you would think as i lie down i will feel one ghost i saw nothing 
I had nothing. I lay down like that for about maybe 20 minutes. Honestly speaking, I even started sleeping small. And later the voice just came, go to bed, go and sleep. The next meeting that we went, I can't remember where, I saw a dimension of the grace of God that I couldn't understand. I said, what happened? And God told me, while you were lying down, your something was happening to you. You don't have to feel it. You believe it. God is not a fool. These are some of you can be there. Lord, who is going to be my helper? And God says, come out in front of your house and just stand for 15 minutes. The natural man. Lord, what I'm, I'm educated. And you stand there. 10 minutes. Somebody passes and says, ah, promise, are you all right? He says, I'm fine. Of course, you can't tell them it's God that is making you a fool like that. And all of a sudden, sometimes the 15 minutes will even finish and nothing will happen. And you just feel disappointed and you go back and say, God, this is what you did. God is watching your aptness to obeying him. One day, you will be sleeping in the night and by 2 a.m., God will say, call Pastor Alpha. Just call and tell him what is the message. Ah, God, how do I call a married man by 2 a.m.? God will say, do it. Immediately you call, he say, I was just about to call you. Here is the message for you. The place is Uyo, not Lagos. That's all I saw in my dream. Look, believers, you need to be dynamic. When you are just straightforward and religious, there is no breakthrough. The operations of the spirit is like the wind. You can't tell where it's coming or where it's going. So is one who is led of the spirit. There are people here who came from Lagos because they were praying, Lord, what do I do with my life? And God says, stand up, come to Zaria. They can't tell you exactly why they are here. That's why when you ask them those questions, it's difficult for them to answer. They don't want to look like they are stupid. Sometimes they themselves think they are stupid, but keep watching God. There is a mystery walking out. Then you will see the glory and the beauty. Why will God tell you to leave Lagos? This gentleman left Ghana and came. Help that lady. I said Lagos and truly, truly, she fell under the anointing. Praise God someone gets up and is enjoying oil money in portacourt and god says stand up and go and do two weeks in zamfara another person can be living where there is an oil well and be dying whereas his money is in sokoto as dry and harsh as the weather is your prosperity is where the voice of god is for you not to green up pastures is not a location greener pastures is a realm where the voice of the spirit directs you there are people any other place you go you will not prosper you will prosper in zaria someone will come in zaria and be wondering what is in this place the only thing i saw was just a few shops here but a direction for you every lifting in this ministry and every greatness god has brought happen right here because we could access these mysteries are you ready to pray we are going to pray sit down you are not going to stand up sit down listen you are just going to play these instruments for me just lightly and then I just want you to pray don't shout and mm -mm, just take out time you just pray in the spirit right take out time and pray in the spirit and you will be surprised to be sensitive to what God will be doing. For some as you are praying, what you'll be receiving is impartation. Some as you are praying, you will not even know what is happening to you. Not every information must be communicated in words. Some truths are imparted. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Don't worry about those shouting. Pray in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus everywhere inside outside you just pray pray in the spirit Ah, 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 ah,
Katakate Predicati Baladaba. Jagate Belekate Baladaba. Show us the secrets of our life, oh God. Show us the way out. Let it come from heaven. Ah, <laughs> ah, 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 of you are receiving things just because your mind is not understanding it you watch and see what happens to you a few days from now what you have received will start being revealed to you and you will see that this is what happened in koinonia oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. lord what is the way out for my business what is the way out for my family? Lord, what is the secret to addressing this barrenness? Lord, what level of unction do I need for this ministry? Why is it not growing? Lord, why is my family stagnated? Why are the works of my hands challenged? Send me help from Zion, O God. Just pray, Koinonia. We are soaking in the glory. Everyone pray in the spirit. Lord, why is my CGPA refusing to rise? What must I do? I have studied. I have done my best. Go ahead. Pray. Lord, what do I need to do? Where is my finances? Oh God, where is it? where is the key to the next level what is the formula for my establishment lord how will you bail my family out do i just meet anybody should i meet a particular helper if yes what is the name who is the helper is he in zaria is she in zaria do i need to go out of zaria lord what is the thing is my ministry in zaria is it in nigeria where is it where is my breakthrough? Pray. Show me the secrets of my destiny. Go ahead. We are not wasting our time. I, I guarantee you. The Bible says the natural man. The natural man. Some of you in the silence, like the dew of Hammon, ideas begin to come. That poultry is my will for you. Don't stop it. That public speaking, you are about to give up, but it is where your finances is. Don't stop. It looks like your church is not growing, but you are called. You just need an upgrade of the anointing. Answers coming from heaven. Spirit of the Lord, we ask you, search for us the deep things. Search the mind of God concerning our destinies, concerning our families, concerning our ministries, concerning our homes. Lord, where will this budget money come from? There is no human way it is going to come. But I know that thou art the fountain of wisdom it is in your light that we see light show me show me open my eyes i am tired of doing what everybody is doing i'm tired of failing like everyone i'm tired of saying yes to just anybody open my eyes show me pray just three or four more minutes Lord where is the anointing where is the place you want me to be meeting with you for prayer is it my room or do I need to go out of my house every night what is the timing what is my time of receiving revelation from you is there a unique time you want to give me 
from 12 to 2 every day is it a time you are giving me it may not be so for everybody but what time have you allocated for my visitation do i need to fast once every day do i need to go on a drive fast what do i need to do do i need to dance for seven days show me oh god there has to be a way out why are my heavens closed why do i fast and pray and yet nothing happens why are the nine graduates in my family jobless show me then the secret was revealed unto daniel and daniel blessed the god of heaven two more minutes go ahead and pray open my mind open my mind open my mind there is a way out there is a way to the wealthy place there is a way to the anointing there is a way to influence there is a way to access the mysteries of the kingdom there is a path which no foul knoweth. the wealth of the lion has not trodden there show me oh god these mystery paths in the spirit these virgin dimensions in the spirit that mortal men cannot dare tread open my eyes oh god like a two-edged sword and let me see the path a mark for my destiny the Lord in Madonna The Lord in Madonna The Lord in Madonna The Lord in Madonna The Lord in The Lord in Madonna Hello, Kim Madonna. 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 Just be silent, everyone. Just be silent. Just be as silent as you can. Wherever you are, just be silent. The Lord is putting something in your spirit. Be still and know. Be still and receive. Be still and hear. Be still and enter. Be still and you will know. Just be silent for two or three minutes. God is doing something in your life. Answers coming as words, as impartations. Be still. Some of you, God will be saying, don't waste your time in that direction. That's not the path for your life. Don't waste your time. Be still. Some of you, God will be telling you the change will not come in one day. Just be patient. I will visit your family, but it will take time. Please be patient. Just be patient with me a few minutes and we're done. Be patient. Answers are coming. Think on your business while you are standing. Think on your family while you are standing. Think on your ministry while you are standing. Answers are coming from the throne. Coming from the throne. God is telling you, I will raise help for you. It will not be with your resources that you will make this happen. The helpers are coming. The helpers are coming. The helpers are coming. This sickness is not unto death. This sickness is not unto death. I will give thee health and cure. 
it is true that the healing ministry is my will for you it is true that the healing ministry is my will for you it is true that the healing ministry is my will it is true that the healing for you the ministry the healing ministry you will walk in it it is true that the healing ministry is Just be patient. I see sparks of light. It's a picture of illumination. You are receiving something in your spirit. God is giving some of us clarity. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands and I pray for you by the message of God that the same way God sends me inside by the angel of his presence, I pray for you. Whatever alignment your spirit must take, to not only hear his voice but receive of the impulses from the throne i make this happen for you now in the name of jesus i make this happen for you now whatever position your ears must take in the spirit your eyes must take in the spirit to clear up the blurry visions to make sure that the speakings are clear i pray for you in the name of jesus May the grace, the spirit of grace, make this happen for you even in this Islam. Supernatural ideas, innovative ideas, supernatural strategies, the strategies that force things to work. Some of you this week will not be over until you begin to see the fruits of superior wisdom this week will not be over until you see things that will marvel you happening by the spirit of god manifesting by the finger of god you will apply the things that you are receiving and you will watch it work it was not supposed to work but because it came by his voice you will see it rise i say to you you will see it rise i speak to you that you will see it rise before the miracle service on Friday some of you will only come for Thanksgiving because before then that which you have received from heaven will walk like fire will walk like fire listen there are some of you the next meeting you will go for as a man of God you will be surprised to see the dimension of the operation of the gifts of the spirit you will go for your meetings and God will give you epochal revelations. You will command the realm of the spirit at your beck and call in dimensions that you will be afraid of. And that one experience will open the doors of finances, open the doors of ministry, increase membership, bring increase for you. Listen, there is a reign of wealth and prosperity that is coming upon this ministry. You hear me as I speak. I don't just talk about money just because, no, 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 no. There is a reign, R A I N, of a dimension. I have seen this thing many times in my visions. A dimension all these miracle alerts are just messages do you know why because god wants to establish men fast to give us room to serve him there is a dimension i want you to write it write it down that there is a dimension brothers and sisters you will see things happen to men you now see that will surprise you i know this by the spirit 
one of the impartations that we are coming to receive on friday is this grace for financial exploits please believe it i'm not apologetic about it because we need it your heavenly father knows there are families that must come to just cry and say god if you leave us to ourselves we may not reach the end of this year i'm rounding up a precious woman one wonderful kaduna family that i love so much they left to church this morning while service was going on in this area thieves came and buckled their house because of the financial squalor you can imagine people now live and go for work they went to church they were praying whereas robbers buckled their house packed everything that can be carried pits whatever i mean carried them um, i don't know they didn't give me the details of what they carried they entered came and saw their house scattered because of the wickedness of satan let me tell you this a spiritual demarcation has been made over this ministry and everyone connected from this grace you are totally exempted from this financial wickedness it's no longer poverty it's warfare there is a spirit behind it to make sure believers are rubbish to become nonsense to make sure pastors become beggars to make sure nothing is discussed in church again no salvation message only money message to make sure that people never rise that the only thing that happens in church is money and raising seeds the spirit of poverty please i want you to come on friday with your heart open we are praying for the sick but some of this let's trust god to make this thing happen in our lives but you mark my word koinonia what is about to happen to men and women god has seen your heart you will see the sudden liftings of men by divine strategies i saw it in that vision people helping themselves and it's like a chain reaction within a short period of time rising in a way that is enviable he made this for our glory father we give you praise tonight we respect your authority in this house we respect what you are doing we take you seriously and we believe you thank you oh god for showing us tonight a system for accessing the deep things of god i pray oh god that you will grant us grace that as we pray this prayer we receive deep things from the kingdom and that grace be supplied to walk in the instructions thereof lord i am asking you to lift everyone lift everyone connected to this vision first lift us spiritually oh god let no one be weak in this place let no one be small in this place oh god let your sons and daughters be men and women of fire and insight and then i pray oh god that the things that pertain unto life you will give us the thing the issues of life may they be solved once and for all that we may have the time to serve you and declare your praises to the nations we thank you we receive it by faith and we declare that this is our experience in the name of jesus christ apostle i want to give my life to jesus christ keep standing everybody i love him with all my heart but seeing what he has done tonight it is a call for me to run to him you're here inside outside overflow one two three by the roadside online you are saying man of god i want to run to jesus i have seen that this is the way i want my life to be or you are here you are saying apostle i've handed my life to jesus but i want to rededicate my life i want to take him seriously because he is my life wherever you are please make sure you run here overflow outside overflow one and two you can come in join those inside overflow three for time's sake just walk to your projector stand please do this quickly wherever you are god bless you god bless you thank you for your courage my brother thank you my sister god bless you i see you coming make sure you don't sit back i love you jesus keep coming quickly i worship and adore you just want to tell you 
that I love you more than anything. Are you coming? Please make your way very quickly. I love you, Jesus. Appreciate them as they come. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. One more time. I believe somebody still needs to come and join them. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Those in front and those at Overflow 3 and those online, all of you, please say this after me. Come join them, darling. Quickly. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. That you are the son of God. I believe you love me. I believe you gave your heart, your life. To set me free. Tonight. I receive of your life. I receive righteousness. I receive all that you have done for me and I declare that I am a child of God the life of God is in my spirit I declare that you are my Lord now and forever I declare that the spirit of the living God comes into my life tonight and he's with me forever thank you Jesus let me pray for you father thank you for these precious people they have come in honor of the call that you have made over their lives and destinies lord preserve them validate this declaration that they have made by faith by granting them access to the spirit of truth the one who can search the mind of the father i pray that you make their lives beautiful produce the garden of eden out of every wilderness in the name of jesus christ amen and amen now thank you so much gentlemen i want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you please go ahead follow him appreciate them as they do so same thing for those at overflow three hallelujah praise the lord thank you so much for your patience um just give me a few minutes three five minutes and we're done this is your first time worshiping with us aside from those going out your first time here at koinonia um, it's a special service we're doing it on Sunday usually our services are Fridays but um, aside from overflow 3 if you are here overflow 1 2 and inside you're most welcome please make your way to the front it's my joy and honor to welcome you very personally please appreciate all those worshiping with us for the first time God bless you God bless you come boldly come boldly make your way please clear the way for them outside those who are coming some of you have come from very, very far. Some of you have come from within town. You are most welcome. All those following us online, in whatever nation of the world, whatever time zone it is there, we love you. We bless the Lord for your life. Thank you so much for connecting with us. The same grace at work here will work in your life. Let's honor them one more time, everyone. Bless you. Bless you. Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin 